everybody's here. Good, uh, yeah, good timing, too. Yeah, actually. Hi, Vorm. Yo. Hi, Keiki. Sup, Cobra? Hey, hey, it's Bagel Day. Sup, J-Bob? <laughs> Lanky leg. Hello. You guys, all... All you friends are the are the antidote to what ails me. Let's go. Alrighty. So my antidote to what ails me is alcohol. Well that's true. <laughs> yeah. wow. wow. I thought it was weed. Well, yeah. And, yeah, true. Alcohol's what I'm gonna go get. I was I can't um use alcohol anymore. I tried to drown my sorrows in bourbon, but those fuckers learned to swim. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's uh, you too, right? Hmm? I, uh, I don't know. I, I read that somewhere. I was drowning my sorrows, but my sorrows, they learned to swim. Um, anyway, I was playing, uh, I, was, I was talking to a friend of mine who was drinking. Um, I believe it was Jameson, a shot of Jameson in cold brew coffee. I've never, good. I've never heard of that before. Uh, that would be Irish coffee. Uh, mm. I don't know that usually it's hot coffee, but yeah. Uh, I mean, I'll take the Jameson, but I'll pass on the coffee. Sure. <laughs> yeah, I like one of those. Hold the cold brew. Thanks. <laughs> oh, well, let me put my phone on vibrate. There we go. All right. Who would like to or can do recap? All I remember is that I'm chilling in uh, Levingham's living room. <laughs> yeah, pretty like much. Waiting. That's all I remember. Yeah, you're in the you're in the the hospital waiting room. <laughs> yep. Sitting there, looking through the same magazine for the third time. It's just trying yep. to read any. Just trying to read any of the books that they have there. It's just so dense and not interesting. It's like reading a textbook mm -hmm. for fun. God, don't say that again. <laughs> okay, but seriously, um, no, if not, I will do it. That is perfectly fine. Um, all right. So, uh, when last we left the vigilantes, you had made your way back to, uh, the city after, uh, finishing up in Zanir, whereupon you met, uh, the true form of the mayor who turned out to be an Arcana Loth, a very powerful neutral fiend, uh, who was more cordial than I think anybody expected. Very disappointed in his uh, current lot in life, as it were. Um, you made some informal deal that he will keep his uh, fiends under control, so long as you promise that soon... You deal with his contractor, Ottoman Sarko, the demonologist, and free him from his servitude. Uh, the witch, using the guise of Tirnas Wulzan, the leader, well, former, because he's dead now, uh, leader of the Grey Slicers, you managed to convince some of the uh, Slicers at the mayor's residence to uh, abandon their post here, as uh, things have, well, quote, well, to lie to them, basically, and say that uh, deals have gone south and they're pulling out. Uh, leaving only the fiends uh, in control of the town. Uh, you made your way back through the canal with Genu, the uh, total fisher. Uh, Madcap uh, stole his engine, <laughs> his magic engine, uh, leaving him to find a new boat uh, to make his way wherever, and you dropped off the, uh, the captives, and, uh, including Shoshana, uh, and Priscilla Nask with Levingham and Grella, for them to hopefully remove the residuum from the students' arms and potentially cure Shoshana of her mind control to make it possible for her to, well, be a person again. Um, 
everybody else kind of went their separate ways. Uh, Quen learned that she was invited to a, an inaugural banquet for uh, Barris Thornton. And Madcap and Pigeon Man went to go see Hostel and traded some information and got some money for some of the things that they had found on their way. Um, that's pretty much it, as far as I can recall. We also went to the magic shop. That's right, you did go to the magic shop. So that's where we sold the engine. Yeah. yeah made the bank. The... Yeah. But she didn't have anything too interesting, right? Uh, not from what I can remember. I, I think she had, like, a javelin of lightning and uh, a couple strange potions. Um, and you guys didn't buy anything. Yeah, but oh, yeah, we swapped items. Yeah, you swapped some items, so... Um, well, actually, I actually have a thing. Why don't we check in with, uh, Ajax, because other than him staying behind there, uh, we didn't really do anything with that. But I do have some things that I have done some of my roles, uh, for how the procedures and whatnot go. And we can go through that. So, Ajax. I didn't do uh, it. <laughs> no, you're fine. Uh, while you are uh, staying at the hideout, uh, sort of doing your best to, as not awkwardly as possible, catch up with uh, your fiancé, um, whilst everybody around you is doing a lot of work, um, Levingham and Grella eventually uh, concoct, uh, concoct a anesthetic, basically. Uh, to put Ilfina under for the procedure because, well, they're going to be cutting into her arms to try and pull crystals out of it. Fun. Um, Shoshana will eventually break away to help them uh, using her uh, newly found detection skills to locate where the crystals are, kind of focusing in on the strong magical uh, presence from them so that they can... Uh, make as few incisions as possible and do it as effectively as possible. Uh, with her help, uh, they are able to do this procedure in only a few hours. Um, and Ilfina, the half-elf, the one who actually recognizes Sarko as the one who did the procedure on her, she reawakens about an hour after the procedure is complete. Her arms are completely covered in bandages uh, and it is very uncomfortable for her to move said arms um, but she and despite being exhausted from the last few the last period of her life uh, she is eager now to move against Sarko and Levingham also has an idea on what to do about Shoshana he explains that the convergence uh, on the back of her neck for the magical uh, seals and lattice work that run up her arms and go you know, finish up there on the back of her neck. Um, he says that that is the main point that needs to be destroyed. Uh, however, without greater research and time, uh, the quickest solution he can find would be to, well, destroy that glyph. But as it is grafted to her skin, um, it will likely be very painful. Uh, but it is something that he can do and ensure that it is not not going to be a problem later on. Hmm. And Shoshana, unless there are any objections, Shoshana is very prepared for that. Saying something along the lines of, uh, it can't possibly be the most painful thing I've experienced. It's better um, than having it on. It's better than having it lying in wait to become a problem. Give me half a second here. Sure. Never mind. That doesn't go and give me a squad of information about what what it's actually capable of, other than just healing. Um, uh, so while, while he's, 
while they're going and discussing all of this, um, and and they're covering the the possibility of pain, we'll say. Mm-hmm. Um, Ajax is going to kind of uh, kind of withdraw a little bit um, and kind of lean back against the wall, and he's actually going to reach out to Ramiel and okay. see if there's anything that that Ramiel may be able to do to kind of help ease that ease that pain, I guess. Okay. I'm going to roll a percentile then. Hmm. As you sort of focus in uh, on the the link to your patron, sort of clasping your hands together and focusing uh, where the mark of the scales are on your tattoo, the symbol of Arathis, and you reach out with your question. And after a moment, Ramiel responds. Perhaps the comfort of her beloved by her side may be enough. Pain is often unavoidable in life. And if she is willing to undergo this to ensure hers and your safety, perhaps that is all she needs. All right. Um, that, that doesn't soothe me much, but if there's nothing that you can do, I guess I, I have little little choice but to ride out the storm and make the port as, as calm as possible. She I... is stronger than you give her credit. Your attachment is under- and worry is understandable, but she has survived this long on grit and hope. She will be fine, I am sure. Discomfort is temporary. Yes, well... Thank you for your... words. I... I... I suppose I'd best go and find some way to <clears throat> prepare myself. Yeah. I, uh... I rolled a 92. <laughs> it wasn't very good. Oh, Jesus. Yeah, um, it's just like, hey, man, just hold her hand. You'll be all right. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, so so as I as I come out of this little, little, uh, little conversation here, um, uh, Ajax is going to kind of go and uh, look up and, and, and he's going to look around in the cupboards in the kitchen. Um, does he find any alcohol? <laughs> Roll an investigation check. That's uh, what I'm looking for right there. Yeah, yeah you find some. Uh, you find some uh, kind of basic whiskey. Some high proof stuff. Oh shit! That's with. Uh, that's in the. I was gonna say, don't we have some? But we. That's in the bag of holding. Mm-hmm. Damn it. Yeah, but you do um, find some in one of the one of their cabinets. Good. Uh, he he's going to bring that with him. Um, and he's he's basically gonna go over and um. <laughs> Grella sees you walk in with him. She goes, "No, fine, go ahead, help yourself." I plan to. Thanks. Um, he he, uh, walks up uh behind, uh Shoshana and and simply wraps an arm around her waist um, and just kind of stands close. I'm going to assume he probably would have stripped out of his armor by now. Yeah, um, I assume by this point, this since point, you've so. been settled in, your armor's just kind of tucked off to the side. Yeah. Um, so yeah, uh, he, he's going to go and just kind of stand beside her and, and just be there nearby. Um, because he has no idea what the fuck they're they're doing or planning and whatnot mm-hmm. and it's it, it's 
I'm going to go with the fact that it's terrifying him because he doesn't understand. Yeah. Uh, as you are there, kind of, and you take a swig with uh, from the whiskey. It's decently strong. Um, she just kind of goes and looks as Levingham is kind of pulling through some of the his notes in his spell book. She just goes, <sighs> Care to share? Uh, he, he would definitely share. Okay. She goes, just kind of uh, closes her eyes and goes back and takes and downs a very big sip. Um, you're quite impressed. Um, not sort of seen that sort of, uh, you know, collegiate skill from her. Uh, <laughs> and she kind of like coughs just a little bit. <sighs> Your stuff's better. Ugh. Yeah. Oh, that'll at least help a little bit. And uh, she goes to sit in a, a chair uh, that you're next to. And she's just kind of holding um, your your hand, uh, fingers interlocked. As Levingham comes back over, his spell book being carried by his mage hand. Goes, All right. I think I am ready. If you are. Yeah, yeah, I'm ready. Uh, Ajax goes and takes another swig. Mm. Hold on. He puts the spell book down and has uh, the mage hand fly over and grabs a clean rag off of one of the tables and goes, you might want to bite down on that just in case. Uh, is he going and giving it to her? Yeah. Uh... Hang on, let me let me check my inbox or not my inbox, my uh, inventory here. Uh, uh, Ajax is gonna go and, and rush over and, and uh, pull a piece of rope out of his uh, out of his pack. Okay, uh, and bring that over. Um, because God only knows, uh, he's he's terrified right now. He's probably gonna end up using that. Uh, in place of what she's chewing on. Okay. So instead, uh, cut off a length of the rope and she'll do that and just thanks. And bite down on it himself as well. <laughs> okay. Solidarity. I like it. Oh. Um, well, like I said, he's terrified right now. Yeah. Letting him goes, he walks behind her as she kind of goes and pulls her hair to the side and kind of leans down a little bit. And she goes, Whenever you're ready. All right. He begins his incantation. Um, and Ajax, from where you can see uh, his hand, his only hand, uh, magical energy is sort of coalescing around it. And the entirety of the underside of his hand starts to glow uh, very brightly. And then he will go and very slowly and gently place it on the back of her of her neck sort of cupping it there and you can see that glow um brighten and then it starts to sizzle and it gets very warm and then you see shoshana begin to sweat and start breathing very deeply through her nose just hold hold and this goes on for an uncomfortably long amount of time, but in reality, it's only like maybe 30 seconds uh, as she's gripping in pain. And you can see that, you know, she's like white knuckling your fingers right now. Um, He's he's behind her at the moment. Uh, I would say you're probably more, like, behind to the side, because Levingham is also behind, because he's placing his hand on the back of her neck. So is she is she standing, sitting? She's what, sitting. What is she doing? She's sitting? Mm-hmm. Um, the way she'd be able to stand after that. I was going to say, Ajax w is going to go around uh, to the front of her um, and okay. kind of take a knee in front of her, and mm -hmm. um, he's going to he's gonna lean in 
and just kind of pull her close um, so that she can you know, squeeze him, I guess. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, and he can kind of hold her her tight as well, so she's not shifting around or what have you. Yeah. Um, and let Levingham kind of squirming a lot. Yeah. Uh, so he's he's gonna go and do that and just try to keep her from shifting around too much. Good, good. Hold her, please. <clears throat> and she's. <sighs> There's very much a lot of pain noises, and eventually stops, and Levingham goes to take his hand away. Oh, good. I was actually afraid that that wouldn't work. It's very strong. Very strong enchantment there. You did well. And hey, you look... You look around the side, and you can see that where that sort of convergence is on the back of her neck, there is now just a, like, uh, there's, like, a whole part of it that's just been completely erased. Like, just, like, a big swipe through it, and the entire sequence is broken. Okay. But there is also a lot of, uh, that part, but that part that, uh, that has the exposed skin, like, the entire back of her neck looks sunburned. Uh, he's he's definitely gonna go and and give her the bottle. Um, yeah. After he <laughs> takes another swig too. She she takes another big one. Uh, let. Uh, Grella is currently assisting Ilfina with something, so Levingham comes back over and he has this um, kind of like ointment container. He goes, oh, "This might help a little bit, but." Just bear with me for a second. And he sort of like starts to spread it on the back. She goes, oh, it's cold. He goes, yes, that's good. That means it's working. And he kind of does that. He goes, it might sting for a bit for a while. So just use that if it ever, if it ever gets bad. And basically hands you this like small little like container that has a basically like yield like noxzema basically <laughs> um he just kind of gives that to her all right well good Paul's vapor rope <laughs> yeah pretty much well <sighs> i have a lot of work ahead of me a number of other procedures that need to be done if you all want to stick if the two of you want to stick around for a while feel free but otherwise she should be safe as it were. No, in no more threat to any magical influence than you or I. But that's better than what it was before. And if you see the, uh, the bird man, tell him I'm going to work on his sister next. We, we haven't picked up the, the communication rings. No, those will be they, done right? tomorrow. Tomorrow? I think. Okay. Yeah. All right. It'll sure be done, like, right, like, like a solid, like, 14, 18 hours, probably, before um, Sarko's scheduled appearance. Uh, Alrighty. He goes, we'll keep Alfina here for the time being. I imagine once you are going to speak to whoever, whoever your contact is at the Academy, just come by and grab her. I think she'll be well enough to walk by then. All right. Um. I think Ajax is probably going to go and stick around for a little while until, like, sh until Shoshana's kind of settled in a little bit more. Mm hmm Um. And we'll, you know, he's basically gonna go and check make sure that she's fine as long as she's convinced that she's all right he'll then go and kind of take off and and track the others down and see what he can do to uh fill them in okay but... maybe about another few hours um her just kind of waiting until the the stinging starts to go away a little bit uh, back when she you know she can rest her hair on that section of her of her neck without too much discomfort. Um, 
and then by then she says she'll be ready to go. All right. Um, okay. So, yeah. Okay. Let's see. Ooh, let's check in with Arco. Hey. Hello. Hey. So, you said uh, last time you were heading over to the temple, right? Correct. Okay. You go back to check in with uh, High Priest Novak there. Uh, when you arrive, um, there are some people who are being let out, uh, probably about a dozen and a half people uh, leaving the temple. Um, seems like they were just finishing up a some sort of service. You walk in and see uh, High Priest Novak is sort of gathering his things together, uh, finishing his sermon, and kind of sees you and goes, Ah! Other than Kara! It's good to have you back. Hello, Pastor. It's good to be back. <laughs> Yes. Um, would you mind coming to my office? I have something for you. Uh, it's your thing. Uh, right. and I'll I guess I'll just kind of follow him to his office. Yeah. Okay. You can go back up to the stairs and uh, going to your right where his office is. And he goes and reaches into his desk and pulls out a small letter. Yes. Uh, this came the other day. And uh, it's a most curious request. A representative of the council dropped this off. And, well, my... It's in my letter for Hogwarts? <laughs> what? Am I old enough to go to wizarding school now? Oh, my God. Uh, no, he explains... Um, there is, well, from what I have uh, been able to gather from the, the letter in question... It appears that um, Mr. Thornton, or Councillor Thornton, is going to be having his inaugural banquet in a few days, and they are looking to shore up some extra security for some of the more paranoid uh, nobles, I suppose. They've requested a... They've requested the presence of a paladin for security. And they have asked the oh, Arathis I'm clergy... I'm a paladin! But you are. They've requested... Uh, some from the Arathis clergy, but apparently they are all busy with something most unusual. So they came to us. Um, I informed them that you were not here at the moment, but if he, if you were to return, I would let them know about this. Um, it would, I would hope that you would accept and be a good representative uh, for Bahamut and our order. Oh, yeah, of course. I, anything for Bahamut. <laughs> Yes, well, uh, likely, from what I understand, the some of the nobles have heard of rumors that there might be a, a fiendish presence somewhere within or around the city, and some of them are just a little worried. Having you around will put many of their minds at ease, and if there is any truth to these rumors, well, certain you can handle it. Oh, yeah, don't worry. I'm really good at shopping demons. Right. Well, the festivities will be held uh, in the next few days. Uh, I think four days from now. Uh, make sure you're prepared. Your armor is polished. Your weapons are in tip-top shape. And well, make sure you're on your best behavior. Remember, you're there for security. You're not there to proselytize. I'm not there to what? Uh... Spread the good I word. I can't do that. Oh. No. Oh. It's, it's spread the good word. <laughs> Thank you. <You're>... Thank you. <laughs> ah, yes. Sorry. Um, keep forgetting. Thank you. Thank you. Vocabulary. I don't want to the... hold hands with people. <laughs> <laughs> um, oh, what a callback. What a callback, yeah. So, uh, so yeah, that's that. So you have uh, an official invitation to Barris Thornton's third inaugural banquet um, as additional security for for the party. Uh, fiend, as a fiend specialist, should the need arise. I'm very good at uh, making fiends. Hey -oh. <laughs> so, with that, uh, High Priest Novak will then just sort of have you 
continue to help out, um, just cleaning up from what has been going on and sort of just keeps you in the loop, as it were. And that'll be pretty much what you do until uh, until such time as you are needed. Mm-hmm. All right. Uh, how how many how far away is it until I actually have to go bodyguard at the uh stairwell? four days and it'll be in four the evening days? on that day yeah okay it's the same date that uh Quen was given for her invitation ah yeah you know that would make sense yeah okay so excellent uh that's pretty much all of the things that I had planned for the people that we kind of skipped over uh who would like to go next I'm pretty sure Mad Cat and I were gonna go to the academy. Uh, I mean that was an eventually sort of thing. Yeah. Uh, um, we have two days until Sarko's um appearance, so and Iolfina is not going to be fit to uh, travel just yet, and she's your primary witness, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. Well, in that case, Pigeon will fuck off home until that's time. Okay. A madcap would want to get the residual pieces out of the bag of holding. Okay. Oh, yeah, I can give those to you. And he would put them in his lead box in his uh, secret house. Gotcha. Okay. And then I think... Madcap, you wanted to also meet with Lucia, too, right? That is true, yes. Thank you for reminding me. Okay, so you have to wait till the evening for that. Uh, yeah. Just so you, that way you know where she'll be. Um, so, we'll kind of do a Metal Gear Solid 5 <laughs> as the sky Stop. turns to night. Sure, whatever that means. Oh, it's uh, in, in MGS5, when you want to pass in-game time, um, it, like, speeds up the the shadow like the the day night cycle okay. all right i got you the set so, day to 100 noise. yeah i i just totally fucking brain farted on how to describe that so <laughs> my bad <laughs> the door is that... is it's like this game dude <laughs> he does a skyrim hey. wait he hits the yeah. <laughs> wait for six hours Oh. He's just standing there, menacingly. Menacingly. All right. So, time passes, and it's now the evening. You make your way over to uh, the Blue Sash's uh, primary barracks, and uh, you don't. Yeah, you gave the levitation boots to Pigeon Man, right? right. Yes. Okay, so you just make your way up uh, the old-fashioned way and kind of tunk, 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 tap on the window. And Lucia's there sort of um, in basically her guard uniform with, like, the uh, gauntlets taken off and whatnot. She still has, like, part of the the chest plate on. She kind of looks, she kind of looks, does, like, a double take and, just, you know, like, clutches her chest and kind of breathes a sigh of relief and just, motions you to come in. i enter. Okay. Well, you've been busy. As she kind of goes and reaches into her desk and pulls out uh, the the paper that was the paper bird. Oh, can't be idle in my retirement. <laughs> Evidently not. You're the busiest retiree I know. Keeps so, me no. young. <laughs> True. So... Demons and Zanir. Uh, demons and slices and slavery, oh my. Great. Well, no longer slicers. Oh. Good? Uh, yeah. Uh, the, blood, the big black bastard's dead. Tianos Wulzan. You took him out? Yeah, with, uh... You know, Lynette Madsen decided to join us, so that helped out. Really? She's not one for... Hmm, interesting. When Tyrannos is involved, she would be one. 
That is true. Made some interesting yeah. allies. They've, uh, they've been going and, well, they've been poaching people from her neck of the woods, so she wasn't exactly. quite happy with that. Um, There's also some bad history between them if, uh, my reports are to be believed. Oh, yeah. And, um, well, there's been two slave trades running through the city. The first one I made you aware about. The <laughs> magic users, yes? That, that, yep. That was for our, um, this demonologist. Which, um, we put a, a stop to what's going on there for the time being. Um, you remember that, that Warforge I mentioned? I think so, yes. The one that well, went with docks normally. The one that kind of like, disappeared. Yeah. Somehow he uh, kind of met up with this demonologist and started working for him, but he was put down alongside uh, Ternas. Rescued mm. some people, including one eyewitness of the demonologist. An eyewitness? That's good. That's very good. And uh, they've been doing experiments embedding that residuum shit in them and somehow using it for mind control. Hmm. And, uh, remember that, uh, the angry bar owner that you were introduced to? Looking yes. for his wife? Yes, I do remember him. I found the wife. Ah, good. good. Same place as them all. Well, very lucky, I suppose. Yeah, we're ticking all sorts of boxes lately. Yeah, so you have... <laughs> busy doesn't even begin to describe it, then. So, demonologist, then, you have an eyewitness to this. You know who he is. So I don't think you've ever mentioned uh, his real name to her. I don't... I wouldn't... I don't remember. Okay. Yeah, um... Aramon Sarko, and he's due to give a lecture at the Academy in two days. The Keeper of Brelindir? Oh, yeah, that guy, too. Wow. Yeah, well, I mean, I told you, I, we fucked up his play, his tower, right? That's, yes. Now it's all starting to make sense. Uh, if he's due to make a lecture soon, that might be the best place to do something about it. And if you have an eyewitness, the mage is there. They should be able to confirm it. Yeah, and hopefully... They can't help. protect him anymore. So, if we can... I mean, I'm good at just killing him, you know. But it'd be good to get some information out of him first. Well, do what you have to do. That's not really my jurisdiction, but if you're doing it on campus grounds with the blessing of the mages, then I don't think you'll have any problems. But that will definitely be newsworthy. DM, do I know who the uh, captain of the Orange Sashes is? I believe so. Let me pull up my people and plots. Thing. Orange sashes are south side. Uh, da, 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 da. Actually, no, that would be that wouldn't be south side. That would be um, the red sashes. Those are because those would be like the dock side area. Oh, the, uh, and the, then the grove. Is this the red sashes that are the uh, watch over the academy? Uh, the red sashes watch over that district. So, like, oh, okay. Uh, the red sashes would kind of cover this stuff. Okay. Blue sashes have, like, this stuff and the plaza. Uh, the orange sashes would have this area. Oh, and then, okay, gotcha. Yeah. Uh, so uh, the red sashes, um, the, that captain should still be around. Uh, that's Elias Trelor. Uh, he's a half-elf. Do I remember much of him? Uh, you know he's got kind of a similar... Um, I'm gonna post it. Uh, he's got a pretty similar demeanor to Lucia, just not nearly as much uh, charisma, ironically. Um, you've heard that, uh, at least from Lucia and from some of your own investigations, that he himself and uh, his lieutenants are generally on the up and up. Uh, but you get the sense that there might be, um, a number of people within his uh, his division that uh, might not be clean. Gotcha. Yeah. 
or like one hand doesn't know what the other's doing. So, um, not quite your jurisdiction. Can Trailer be trusted to at least to be minimally involved? Uh, they mostly guard the exterior of the campus. On the inside, the mages typically handle that themselves. Sort of self-police. But, uh, should anything unturred happen, um, we he would have authority to enter the, the campus and do that sort of thing. But, well, Trelor's had a bit of a tough go of it with corruption within his ranks. But he himself and his lieutenants, I would trust them. If he gets pers- if he or one of them are personally involved, it'll go it'll go smoothly. Now, I don't know if we can, you know, maybe give them an eleventh hour heads up that something might be going down. At least get a few bodies ready to. I mean, who knows what the fuck this guy's gonna do? He summons demons all over the place. Right. Um. I'll tell you what, I'll pass a tip along to him uh, to keep an extra close eye on it. Have him have him and some of the people he trusts be close by. Uh, there might be some problem on the campus. I think he'll pick up what I'm putting down. And at the very, very least, good. you'll have uh, at least have the exit covered. Good. Um, well, right now, our the former master of Bremendir is uh, looking over our uh, I don't remember. Uh, witnesses. Wit- yeah, witnesses. Um, they they're trying to get that residuum out of their arms. So hopefully, if that goes well, we'll be able to transport at least the the most important one, the witness, to the academy. She's a former student. All of them are. So hopefully her word will carry some weight. Um, I've... Hang on, I just need to look something up. Go ahead. I've, um... I've had a couple of meetings with Magus El... El Valor, myself. Um... I I may have been wearing my old guard uniform at the time. You know. It's something I could do again. Uh, but I don't know if you would, you know, an actual captain attending the meeting might help if it wouldn't raise too much suspicions. I suppose I could. I have uh, witnesses, uh, he said two days, right? Is when he's supposed to make another appearance? Yes. Mm, eh, I can always pawn off my patrol to somebody else. Give it to Sudash. Okay. Sudash? He can always use more work. <laughs> True enough. I suppose. Well, um, I could accompany you uh, probably midday if that works for you. Tomorrow? Yeah, I can do tomorrow. Good. Well, um, it'll be us, our witness, and, um, well, we'll see what other compliment we may need. Right. I should also let you know, um, since you've been back in town, have you heard anything about what's going on in the upper crust of society? I know you have somebody in your ranks who is, uh, a bit more connected in that regard. No, we we got back early, um, mm. took care of what we had to do as a group, and then went our separate way to run some errands. Well, the since we arrested Vermilion and subsequently had her exiled, there's been nobody to run against Barris Thornton, and so he is set to win by default, I suppose. And as such, he is already planning his inaugural banquet. Uh, two days from when this meeting of this lecture is supposed to happen. I have been required to attend, as with all the other captains. All the council members are also scheduled to be there, and many other more important people. I know you are very keen on getting in there into the dungeons and meeting with Fat Tusk for whatever reason. 
Oh, I, I am, and I was going to ask about that, but please continue. Yes, well, I figured I'd mention it since I haven't been able to come up with anything about those escape tunnels. This could be a legitimate way for you in. I'm allowed to, well, bring a plus one as a guest. I could, as a gesture to an old friend for years of service, give you a little, uh, little taste of the high life. That'll get you in. And, well, it'll be a lot easier to get somewhere you're not supposed to be if everybody is uh, distracted with uh, drink and gossip. Security will also be pretty light once you get out of the main party area, as most people will likely be around that area. See, I didn't know you cared so much. I'm touched. Well, Fat Tusk has been forthcoming with a lot of things, but given everything that you've told me, there's quite a lot that he hasn't said anything officially on. If you could get any more out of him, I would appreciate it. But, at the same time, I just have a bad feeling. All those people in one place and with everything going on lately, then this plot that you've been working against... The fact that it's very clear that Tarkov, the Commandant, and at least one other council member do not have our best interests in heart. I am worried. You've mentioned the Commandant before. Was that just him pulling the sashes out of the Shade Burrow? Or is there something more to it? It's not just that. That, well, there's two reasons with that one. One, it seems a bit odd to do that and basically forfeit the entire region to the slicers but at the same time its tactical sense would dictate that well after their captain gets brutally murdered and well any of the guards were no safer on the on the street than most average citizens would have been better to pull them out and regroup but there have been no plans to do such thing in that amount of time and that's what Gave me my initial suspicions. Secondly, he ever since learning about Tarkov's involvement, the meetings that he's had with the counselor have me worried. He meets with Tarkov a lot. More often than any other counselor. I can't imagine he's that interested in mining, although he's a dwarf. That is true, but the Commandant does not take much interest in politics. He is there on the Council as the representative of the Guard. He is supposed to be our voice, as well as our d highest superior. It's the highest on the chain of command. But if he's been compromised, then, well, no one else is safe. On top of that, I have. There's also the reallocation of mine and other uh, divisions' men. That's what put you on the path to Sudash. It's just he's acting different, far different than he has in in the past. I wonder. Did he, by chance, just go missing for a while? at any point not as far as i know the commandant is uh well he makes the rounds with the various barracks every uh every few months just to check in and other than that he usually stays in the acropolis most of the time as uh, the gold sashes report directly to him uh -huh. i do not know of any time he has gone missing for any extended period of time without it being official leave or anything like that well we're we're gonna have to be careful of everyone so this demonologist he summons demons and of of multiple sorts of i've lost count of how many different variations we've seen in the past few weeks but there are some that have been taking human form the mayor uh, what's the town we were in just now? 
Zanir. Um, the mayor of Zanir was one, a demon, masquerading as the mayor himself. For eyes widen when you say that. Possibly for who knows how long. The same could happen with the commandant with God knows who. Great. Well, now that request for a paladin and for security makes sense. If some of the others who are not involved have heard of rumors such as these, they would be concerned. A paladin? Yes, for the party security. There's some nobles who uh, have put in an official request for that over concerns of their own personal safety, just based off of rumors from what I hear. Unfortunately, the Arathis clergy does not have many or any to spare at the moment, as as soon as I got your letter, I spoke with their keeper, Dorian. And, well, they're going on a crusade. Uh, to Zanir and north of it. To Zanir itself. I am not sending anybody associated with the city or not to the Draconia camp. The last thing I need is to be the cause of another blockade. I hope you gave them fair warning, because those... Those fiends are not going to be taken down lightly. Well, they're... It's a large contingent. The Arathis clergy are very well staffed, as these... Look, these temples are their base of operations, unlike most other places where they might have a few people of significant power on staff, but centers of civilization are holy ground for Arathis. Have, have they left they, yet? They have. They, they left, left this morning, I believe. Would How long would it take to get there? Well, they'd be going by foot, so not as quickly down the canal. They'll likely be there within a day. Would it be possible for you to send a runner on the fastest horse to to tell them things, to give them more information? I could. I could get in with uh, somebody and have them do that. Why? What's uh, Has something so, changed? I mean, since it's so they can know that the mayor is a fiend. And a particularly powerful one, I get the feeling of. He's the if he's the one in charge. All right. Uh, the uh, the shopkeep, the the general store is what is one as well. All right. Are the slicers still there? Are they still in control of that town? No, we. Uh, the the Shadeborough witch is a woman of many talents. Uh, she, I don't know exactly what she does, but she can take the form of someone else that's died much more convincingly than simple magic. And uh, she masqueraded as Tirnas and uh, convinced them that the, the deal they had with these fiends had fallen through and they all need to get back to the city as quickly as possible. Uh, where I believe Lynette is going to be ready to take that down as many as she can. Well, alright. Hmm. So we have a Holy war and a gang war going on all at the same time. Wonderful. Well, at least... At least I make your life interesting. That is true. At least the Harkers won't get in the way of the guards too much. If she can take out the Slicers and get them to scatter and anybody who... And anybody who wants to join up with her, well... That'll at least make it easier for the White Sashes to take the town back. Assuming the Commandant gets his head out of his ass. So if they're not getting an Arathis Paladin, where are they getting a Paladin? Well, the only other major temple in this city is the Bahamut Temple. And Madcap just, like, face palms. <laughs> Why? What? You wait. I don't think she knows that. No, wait, no. She does know that you know him because she encountered you all. Yeah, uh, yeah. She goes, oh, well, and Madcap right. would know it's him because he's the only fucking paladin. And well, I'm, I'm right. more. Yeah, I'm also more so thinking like, uh, does Lucia? Does Lucia remember that? But yeah, she would. She goes, oh, I see. Well, if 
as, as long as he can stand there and look intimidating and not talk to anybody, I think it'll be fine. I don't think that last one's going to happen. Well, we'll be attending. If anything, you can keep him company. I'll keep an eye on him. Hmm. If I don't find a way down to the fat man. Right, well, we might have to work. If that's the case. He could be our way down to the fat man. Maybe. Maybe. Well, I don't know. This is just... This is odd timing with everything happening so so quickly in the city. And and somehow, the entire party is going to have an invite to this place. It's almost as the DM is setting something up. <laughs> <laughs> my, my lips are sealed. My spider senses are tingling. What if I just want you guys to have a good time at a high society party? Are there going to be hors d'oeuvres? Oh, absolutely. There would be fancy That will be good. <laughs> At least we've got a few days to to sort everything else out. Especially if we can if we can neutralize Sarko before the party. If he no longer has control of his demons, I'm sure some will run amok but others will just fuck off. From what I understand, we've we've heard a couple times from these fiends that they are very unhappy with the situation that they are in. The mayor of um, Zanir just wants to leave. He wants nothing more to do with his contract or with the, the town there. He wants to be able to do his own business. I shudder to think what sort of business that would be, but if it is no longer going to pose a threat to us, then I suppose it's not my problem. I thought we have enough problems of our own. Right. So if this these benefactors lose their fiends, that puts them at a significant disadvantage. Right. But a cornered animal is often more dangerous than one with confidence. Well, from what I understand, they they have the ability to awaken this beast. They've had that for a while. They just lack the control over it that they desire. So if push comes to shove, they just might do it anyways. And that's not going to be good for anybody, so the quicker we do this, the better. We've already taken out one of them. Now if you take out this one, that only leaves three. And as far as we know... They don't have an army at their back, at their beck and call. No, not, with, not without Fat Tusk and not without the Fiends. Well, the or slices the slice. by the look at look right. of it. This, the, the archer seems to just be an assassin. I don't think he's one for a large-scale fight. Tarkov, who the fuck knows what's going on with him? And uh, this lady, Drake... Well, Still an enigma. A formidable creature, I imagine, but she won't take out an army. Well, in any yeah. event, uh, right now the big question is where this creature is. We know it's underground in these tunnels, but no one knows where anything is down there. I might have a lead on someone to start mapping it out, but that's an endeavor and going to be a costly one. Right. Well, I don't know how much luck I can have. I can help you with there. I have my hands full enough and a few extra hands to deal with things. But here's the thing. If we can get a lot of these other players out and make things easier on the city so that the rest of us can do our fucking jobs and get those who are keen on, well, making those jobs difficult out of the way, and that'll make the rest of this much easier. So, focus on the demonologist. Because at the end of the day, if a demon can just, if a demon or devil or some other extra planar creature can just swoop in and start tearing up the place, well, it's, my gods aren't going to be much help in that regard. 
And if they don't have control over them, then those that go run amuck can be dealt with by the paladins. And any of the others will just leave and go somewhere else. As much as I wouldn't want them to hurt anybody else, I'm looking on the bright side. And, uh, well, hopefully in two days' time, that'll be taken care of. Good. When the others, when those other students are returning to their homes, let me know where they, they stay. I'll, I'll make sure that good people are there to protect them for the time being. Um, I think we'll be keeping an eye on them. I mean, I don't know how quickly it will be before they get their own surgery, but um, we'll be keeping an eye on them until the demonologist is taken care of. We won't want to have them recognized and anything to happen before that. Good. All right. Well, we have our heading. I'm going to prepare for all of this, and I'll let you know if anything else comes up. Do you want this bird thing back? Uh, sure. All right. She gives you the the paper bird back that you expended. I mean, I I still have a couple. Would you want to hang on to it in case you need to get a hold of me? It's a good idea, actually. I'll do that. She goes, puts it back in her desk. All right. Well, it's good seeing you again. Glad you're not dead. <laughs> me too. But, um. Yeah. I'll uh. I'll stop by. Uh, well, tomorrow. Um, I'll come pick you up. Uh, and we'll go to the safe house. That's where I've stored Levingham, and that's where the they'll be performing the surgeries. All right. Well, you've been quite busy. I think you should go get some rest. Yeah, I can use a nap. All right. And with that, your meeting with Lucia concludes. Um, I'm going to go to the bathroom real quick. I'll be right back. So how about them bears? Them bears. They're bears. Yep. I don't know how I feel about these war paints that they added. Aeroforge thing? Yeah. I didn't know they added a new feature. Let me check. They're on the uh, they're on the second tier of bonuses now. Um, I th think they've got new mounts coming up. They've got Ooh. yeah, they've got Wyvern a bear mount, mount or bust. <laughs> I am I I want to see like dinosaur mounts. I want to see oh. fucking kobolds yes. riding around on raptors. Yes, then that way I can make minis for the for draconian lightning cavalry. Oh yeah. I like the I like that they added like makeups and stuff like that. So then now you can actually like do stuff to make uh you know the like female models not look like horrendous. Yeah. Give them a little bit of you know style and look. Yeah. I don't know, some of these face tattoos are okay. Some of them, a lot of them just kind of remind me of the really bad like default Skyrim ones, but like some of yes. them are pretty cool. They're they're kind of yeah, I don't know. I'm I'm not I'm not overly happy with them. I do like that they added like stubble. Where are though. they? That's good. They're, um, they're, they'll be in decals. If you go into the decals, yeah. Okay. Decals me, go to the face. Let me put. Let me open a character who doesn't wear a fucking mask. Yeah, that'll, <laughs> that'll help. <laughs> Why can't um, I see him? Who do? But supposedly they have body tattoos coming up here soon too. Nice. 
Uh, All right. Let's see. <sighs> All right. So, um, before we get into the meeting, because that's kind of the big thing that's coming up next, is there anything anybody else would like to do as we pass into the next day? I mean, I went home. Is there anything at home? No, there's nothing at home uh, at the moment. Um, let's see. So Ajax and Shoshana are now at the goal? Yes. At this point? Um, okay. I would say, I think the only, most of the, the staff that are there don't remember her except for Sarah, right? They would all actually. No, they would all. Well, okay, maybe fine. maybe some of the younger ones wouldn't. Like the serving um, girls. Yeah, um, I think that uh, Molly, I don't think would know her. Um, the 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 sea elf uh, one would. Um, and the gnome cook wouldn't know her, but um, okay. the others would all know her. Okay, so it's a very uh, heartfelt and tearful reunion as uh, she returns and uh, Shoshana remarks of how well the place looks and it's like, oh, it's uh, like no time has passed at all but there are some new people and there's kind of a small party that kind of happens um, once some patrons leave and you can safely close up for the night That reminds me um, mm -hmm. is that closet still running around uh, chasing rats and whatnot? Oh, no, he fucked off. <laughs> oh, okay, all right. I was... no, he fucked off as soon as he was certain nobody was watching him. I, I kind of wondered what, what happened there. Like, I'm sitting there, I thought about it the other day, and I'm like, I wonder if he's still there. Yeah, no, he's he's a demon. He's like, all right, just play. He's he's a low rank demon. He's like, just play it cool, play it cool. Nobody's looking. All right, cheese it. <laughs> like, all right. Um, all right. But yeah, um, very, very uh, happy reunion. Everybody's very happy to see her. And she's very happy to see everybody else. Uh, Witch, did you have anything? Ellis? Ellis is napping. Oh, no. Either that or his children are doing children things. Maybe. Should be being fucking dead. <laughs> True. Alright, well, we'll skip over that for now. Um... Oh. oh, so some of the new decals actually make it easier to make scars. Ooh, yep. nice. AK just added a new one to this character. That's pretty cool. Alright. So, uh, getting up, uh, everybody awakens after their, their next long rest and go about their daily plans. Uh, Madcap, as you're getting ready to leave, um, Sort of midday, you do get a message from the uh, Enchanter Lady letting you know that the earrings of communication are finished. Uh, and I am now just realizing that I don't think I put them in D&D Beyond. So... Dude, you've had like two months. I, here's the thing. They're already done. I just haven't made them. I'm just uh, so what are we talking about? Let me, oh, um, we skipped ahead to the the next day, and it's the the earrings of communication. So, um, uh, are they not in here? Oh, they're in jewelry. That's right. Um, Ajax, are you still at Levingham's, or are you at the Gull? No, we're at the Gull at this point. Okay, so you would have when you returned to the Gull. What time was it approximately? Uh, it would have been, yep. like, the evening. 
Okay, yeah, you would have found Quinn kind of s- sitting at the bar, just kind of drinking whatever, kind of okay, mulling, would, uh, mulling over the universe. <laughs> part, then you would uh, partake in uh, the festivities as everybody um, uh, celebrates the return of Shoshana. Yes, of course. Nope, that's not correct. Hold on. Here, I'm just making the... Damn it. All right. What if I do this? Copy and then paste is plain text. Yeah, there we go. Paste is plain text. And you had five of these things made, right? One for each party member? Yeah, I believe so. Yeah. It's a wondrous item. We'll put it at a rare value. Does not require attunement. these uh, you should be able to search earrings in the item thing and they should pop up Ooh. Um, I'm not gonna I'll probably go through them later and see if there's like a thing I can put in for like conditional telepathy or something but uh, that's gonna take a bit of time for me to the ear Monkey horn of look. hearing what the fuck? Earrings of communication. Uh, oh, yes. do they do they update inventories to have a backpack and an equipment? Is so backpack, equipment, and if you have a bag of holding, they add a bag of holding. Oh shit! Oh jeez, there's sa- oh because I have sacks, I can add, I can customize what's in each sack and equipment. Oh, that's oh, pretty. Cool. Yeah, that's actually pretty cool. Kind of cool, but it's now it's just cluttered. There's so many. Oh, uh, <laughs> yeah. So I, so I feel like this is really fucking cluttered for anybody who didn't start with a bag of holding. Yeah. Because there's no items in my bag of holding. Yeah, now you have to go and, like, drag everything over. Well, that's, that's, I was like, you, you, can't, you can't drag them. You have to manually take shit out and then put it back in. Oh, that's yeah. dumb. If there was a drag and drop, it's like, okay, it's not too bad, but it's... Oh, wow. you can click on it and move it. Okay. okay. So there is a drag and drop. So well, it's not it's not a drag and drop. There's a button that says move, and then it's drop down. <laughs> oh, that's it's cool. like a, it's like an MMO UI. <laughs> um, but most MMO UIs have like fucking drag and drop though. Mm, not all of them. WoW Some doesn't have drag and drop still. It doesn't. For, it only drag and drops in the inventory. Okay. You cannot use drag and drop to use it anywhere else. Huh. Anyways. Dude, I can't find the earring. Um, you might have Riff to line. refresh because since <laughs> oh. I just added them, it's not in the database for you yet. Yeah, chances are. It'll yeah. do it. So, uh, if I remember correctly, it was a thousand feet, five of them, uh, for the telepathy, and then or at least like the, the whispering kind of thing. Um, and they don't require attunement. You know, it's funny. I think there's a roller coaster called the Dragon Drop at a place near me. I I wouldn't be surprised. Hmm. Yeah, still not finding it. I refresh. Huh. Nothing there. Spelling it for it. Uh, earring is E A R R I N G. That's that is correct. Huh. Did you refresh? I just, I just put ear in, and, and I have them. I didn't even have to refresh. Hmm. I had to refresh, but... Yeah, that's weird. Yeah, I'm doing it on Ajaxes, and it's not coming up. <laughs> yeah, I broke it. I noticed how Cobra said... You have, um... In your character settings, like, if you go into edit character... Do you have, um... Uh, Playtest content. content on or homebrew content on? Oh, that might be it then. 
I yeah, don't know that I have home, homebrew. Go turn, yeah, go turn on homebrew content. Yeah, that'll do it. Because I had the same issue oh. when I was trying to add the cowl to my, um, the cowl of the trash part to my inventory. Yep. Was I didn't have, I didn't have homebrew on. Because, like, no offense to you, but since, like, we're connected to you for the campaign, when I'm going oh God, through yeah. races or subclasses, it's a fucking pain. Everything's when, in there. It's a pain in the ass, I know. Like, because, because, you know, I have all of your homebrew, so it's like... You know, everything you like is like, oh my god, there's 18 rogue subclasses. <laughs> it, it just gets even worse, yeah, I know. It's a pain in the ass. I like, I genuinely do too. not mean that to offend you, but it is no. just so much. <laughs> no, like, I, I, I keep it off on mine all the fucking time. I don't know why I still have all that shit in there, but I do. I just, yeah. It fucking connects. Jeez. What are you going to say, Alice? Good stuff. Uh, I think just how you said refresh and like said refresh. I just it was interesting, like regional dialects. That's all. Wait, do we do Jake and I say it differently? No, we're Cobra. from the same region. No, oh, Co that, that's Cobra why. and like did. Oh, huh. It's like, yeah. it's like if you ever watch the angry video game nerd, he always says review, and people give him shit about it. He's like <laughs> review. Yeah, he says review. Yeah, I mean, I mean neither, neither are grammatically incorrect. No, it's just, uh, you know. Put the emphasis on the different syllable. <laughs> Put the, yeah, the, yeah, the, <laughs> the emphasis on the wrong syllable. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, so, you now have that. Y'all can just add them to your inventory, because I imagine at some point, uh, Madcap will pass them around to people. Uh, yeah. Oh, so. Okay, sorry. I'm, I'm so, like I'm like ADD tonight. Please continue. <laughs> it's fine. It's whatever. It's the, welcome to my every day. <laughs> um, it's like see how I just like procrastinated on uh doing this one item that I already had created in a word doc for a previous campaign and nobody bought the fucking item. So I'm just like, all right, yeah, <laughs> acceptable. Um, and then the and then the city got destroyed. So now those are gone. <laughs> it just it just reminded me of, of a thing I saw where it's like whatever word you put the emphasis on, it changes the meaning. Like, I didn't say for you to kill him. 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 <laughs> it changes every time. English, English is a fuck. Yeah. I didn't say for you to kill him. Yeah. I didn't well, say for you to kill it. him. <laughs> <laughs> so, Madcap, after picking up those uh, earrings, um, who do you gather beyond the obvious people for the, uh, the meeting? I I probably want to just at least grab everyone just for a quick chat. Okay. So I'd probably before getting Lucy, I'd probably go get um, Pigeon first. Okay. Yeah, I'm important. Then Arco at the temple. Yeah, let me just think of... No, then Quen. Well, Quen's at the, the goal. So oh, right, 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 right. Yeah, then Arco, then... Okay. So the everybody goes and meets at the goal. Let's switch us over so we can RP the fuck out of this. Can we, can we RP, uh, RP us getting Arco? <laughs> sure, if you, if you have something planned. Yeah, I just want to show, uh, show up at the, the thing. Just, like, knock on the door. It's open. The temple is open for you. Go inside. Uh, uh, where, where would Arco be? Uh, what time is it right now? Uh, it's probably... About then. Like, very early afternoon, I would say. Early afternoon? Yeah. Um. Probably. He's chasing I'm probably like in the cleaning park. up from like a from like a mid, like a an afternoon or like a, a like a noonish service probably of some kind. Okay. So, are you just, are you polishing the dead body of Tonka? No, that got left at uh, what's his name's place? Levinghams. Oh. Levinghams. Yeah, I was I was like, look at Levinghams to keep it. No, um, I'm I'm cleaning. Okay. But I'm wearing very, very flattering robes. 
Like you can see my muscles. <laughs> I'm gonna, I'm gonna fucking turn into this guy now. I think. <laughs> One. Uh, anyways, no. Um, I'm sorry, my dog was bothering. No, I'm just, I'm just cleaning. Uh, in probably the middle of the temple right now. Okay, so yeah, so I'd um, I just go up um, lantern. And I'm gonna look over to you. Well, good morning. Well, actually, it's more like early afternoon. So good afternoon. Shut up, Arco. <laughs> he was trying to be nice. It's well, he if he was trying to be nice, he would have thought of it more. It's morning somewhere, Arco. Or do those people not matter? Well, it's also five o'clock somewhere, but I don't really know what that means. <laughs> We're going to go meet everyone at the, the gull. We can find out what that means there. Okay. Um, does, it, does it mean that we go to the gull at five o'clock? We go now. Okay. And, uh, uh, are you fond of jewelry? Uh, depends. What is it? It's an earring. You put it on. I don't have any ears. Arco has ears. Arco has put it. <laughs> put it in between your snout. <laughs> the, you have ear the holes. <laughs> uh, Arco, uh, Cake uh, dragon board have like ear holes, like lizards right, do. right, 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 right. So, I know, but this is this is what I mean. I'm okay, I'm going to, f yes, I would um, say you or, have yeah. like a you have like a ridge or like a brow or something. Where no, 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 I understand how this works. Oh, okay, I know that I don't have ears, and Argo knows that he doesn't, he has ears, but he doesn't have like physical, like humanoid ears of any kind, yeah, and okay. that I'm trying. Well, now, now it's ruined. I was gonna try to. I was gonna Sorry. try to fuck with people, man. Sorry. Okay. All right. It wasn't even gonna be that funny. Anyways. Um. Oh, an earring. That's uh, that's quite interesting. Let me uh try. Let me try this on. And I'm gonna. I'll. I'll stick it in my little ear hole. Okay. I'm guess. I'm guessing Pigeon has his own. Yeah, he'd have it actually around his nose. He'd have it on the septum instead of his ear, but... Yeah, Madcap would actually have his on, like, like not like, not in the low, but like the... Wait! Wait, 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 It's like an, like a hoop earring? Yeah. Oh. Oh, wait, it's a hoop earring? Mm-hmm. It's yeah, not like wait. a, it's, it's not like a, it's not like a big hoop earring, but it is a, like... Can I... Uh, oh, it's not dang. a stud. Dang it. I was really hoping that I can get mine to be really large and then put it in my nose and have like a cool little almost bull ring like nose, but never mind. Um, does it have to be near my ear for me to actually use it or can it be anywhere on my person? Yes, it does. Actually, it does have it to does be, have to be my ear. Does the magic the magic uh, message can only travel so far while be whilst being quiet. So um, it has to be near your ears where you're going to actually hear it. Okay, I have those. Grip, I have those sort of them. like flat, sort of like flaps right next to my head. I can probably manage. Yeah, yeah. You, you got a spot near it that you can put. Yeah, it. I can put it around my horn. I technically do have horns. Yes, that you. Do. I'll put it around my horn. It's around my horn. Okay. It takes Close a second enough. to get it through the, the horn, but uh, it goes in. Excellent. Um. I kind of like, like, after, like, he puts it in, I kind of, like, give Pigeon a look and, like, a head nod to, like, do something. I don't know what do something means. To say something. Is. Oh, something. Uh, I'll, uh, I'll say, hey, Madcap, ever heard of D's? I meant to Arco. Well, when you do it, it does it to all of them uh, within range. It's it's like a it's like a um, conference call. We're in a teams meeting. Yeah, you're in a teams meeting. <laughs> well, <I see. laughs> Arco, you're on mute. Sorry. 
Oh, okay, guys. Um, let me just share my screen here real quick. <laughs> okay. Uh, can everybody see it? Um, are, are you sharing oh. a screen? Did you um, click share? I'm not seeing anything. Can everybody? Uh, can everybody hear it? Oh, Sorry, it's getting like, too real. <laughs> dude, that is hand down really quick. Music school, right? Gotta listen. Biggest thing that happens almost every single class, every single time, any time a teacher at our school that would share their screen and there was music playing from it, they wouldn't share it with sound. It happened every day, every single day. I'm like, please, please. I think if you, if you like share your screen, I think there's a way to manually set it so that it always shares your sound. But it was, I just got yeah. it. Uh, that's, a, that's a good point because yeah, I've tried to play like a video or whatever, but they can't hear it. Exactly. I don't Sometimes, know how to do that, I actually. know with like Discord, it depends on how you share like if you share yeah, an application, so with Discord you have you have to share the application. You cannot share your screen because mm -hmm. if you share the monitor, it doesn't play the sound because right. obviously, you know it's yeah. not the monitor that plays the sound. Mm -hmm. So it could be the Mine same with the store. Well, not everybody can be as cool as you, Vorm. <laughs> that's that's All true. Right. So, um, Arco and the. <coughs> Three, the, well, the three of you now have uh, your earrings in, and they are working. So, reason I wanted this to be like two minutes. Oh, okay. So, okay, so uh, Arco. I know. I heard you're going to a party. Yes, I'm in a party. Are you excited? Oh, very. Are you going to tell all the good people about the uh, the good word of the hop? Um, I've been thinking about it, and I probably should. However, I think that it would not stein, or it would not really reflect the um, maturity and sort of stature of our temple if I were to be spreading the word so much. I'll try to keep it on the more like, uh, you know, e easier side. I won't be forcing it in as many people's faces as like I usually do. You know, you know how I am. So, I'll probably be a little bit easier on it, not really force it on the people, but if somebody brings it up, or you ask me a question, I'll gladly help him out. You gotta be a cool dude. And I'm gonna do finger guns at you. What? what? Restraint? Finger crossbows. Finger crossbows, yeah. Which actually surprisingly look a lot like the, uh, Spider-Man. <laughs> How Hold would you up. do finger crossbows, actually? Hold up. Arco's oh. showing restraint? Character development. Yeah. Mm -hmm. wow, I am maybe, concerned. Uh, Mac up his hand. Wow, I'm proud of you, Arco. For what? For sh showing restraint. But, uh, I'll be there to keep an eye on you. Ah, uh, uh, thank you so much. And, um, we may have some paladin work to do there yet, so be ready. Excellent. Good to hear. I'm I'm excited. You think the party's gonna have some of those poor devoir? Oh, I'm sure. I'm sure there'll be some uh, crudite as well. I've never heard of this crudite. What is this? Uh, it's a vegetable platter. This. Crudite. You think they might have any of those uh, cheese and ham boards? The uh, the charcuterie boards? Charcuterie uh, boards? Board? The charcuterie? <laughs> uh, they probably will. What about Sean Connery? <laughs> I'm, Thank I'm you. Really, I'm really hoping Thank you can um, rush Cheddar. Rush Cheddar? Please don't make me say that word. It's charcuterie. They have I to... said that. Please don't make me say these words anymore. I'm getting spit all over my monitor. Yeah. <laughs> oh, <I'm dying. laughs> oh my gosh, my pop filter is soaking wet. I can't do this. <laughs> Grody. 
some uh, I gotta like refuel. Some canapes would be great too. Oh God. Okay. <laughs> it's a good bit, everybody. We'll be here all week. <laughs> I I feel concern right now. I just want to have a brief conversation about the the party with Arco. So okay. Like So, uh, is there anything else you wish to discuss before heading over to the goal? Meet up with everybody else? Yes. Not really. I don't know if Pigeon would ask about what we were talking about. Or if he's. No, I'm not going to fall into the trap. Or if he's just high or whatever. <laughs> I'm I'm very sober and I'm working on Pigeon Man 2.0. Oh god. Not like a character like Hero Forge. Oh. They added new Thieves Leathers. Thieves yeah. leather, yep. Leathers. And they they're really fucking too. nice. Yeah, yeah, and they added Thieves Tools, so. They've added a lot of new shit. They added new shields. Yeah. New spell vortex effects, which the fire ones yep. do. Ooh. I like those shields. Those are nice. You said that like Chamberlain from Dark Crystal. Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> oh, yeah, those. Okay, those. I was like, wait, I don't see spell effects. Like, oh, they're pro only right now. And they're XL? Bro. Let's go. Sick. I really like the repurposed pirate ship wheel. Yeah, that's pretty cool. So, if there's nothing else to discuss, we will move you all over to the Gull, properly. And, uh, seeing everybody come in, uh, I imagine Ajax and the Witch kind of notice, oh, time for a meeting, and head into the, uh, office area, I guess. Uh, so Shoshana is there, but she's just kind of sitting on the, the table. Having some afternoon tea, by the looks of it. I give Ajax and the witch their earrings. All right. Um, Quinn takes it, and you notice she has like several earrings in each ear, so she kind of looks at it, and then she sort of deliberately kind of chooses one to take out, replacing it with the magical one. Okay. Um. So, Ajax doesn't have pierced ears at this point. I mean, Matt kept in either. I assume it's magical in some sense. Yeah, you pretty much just pierce it through and it, like, it doesn't hurt. Well, it it hurts, but there's no lasting, there won't be any lasting consequences. Like, it, once it adheres, it kind of just kind of accelerates the healing process around it. You'll be fine. We're not going to roll for your infections. Green. Yeah, we're not rolling for gangrene. Don't worry about it. <laughs> uh, so yeah, Ajax would go and find out a pin or something and go and uh, pierce his ear. All right. Probably come out bitching and complaining because it aches. <laughs> Shoshana just goes. Trust me, you won't even notice it in a in a few in a few hours. You got yours pierced as a kid. I don't want to hear it. Hey, don't complain about that though, because that probably made gift giving really fucking easy for you, Ajax. It's true. Well, Not I know a kid. It by looking at it, but he has good taste. <laughs> I've tasted his alcohol. I know he has good taste. Mm -hmm. 
Well, you know, I try. <laughs> that felt good. So, y'all have your earrings in. They're working. Start. Um, yeah. So today I am to have a meeting with uh, Magus Elvalor at the college uh, with our witness students uh, to discuss what can be done about Ironman Sarko. Captain Lucia of the Blue Sashes will be coming with us. Um, it will be myself, her, the witness, and I thought I'd open it up to the group who might want to join, who might be necessary to come along. Uh, I believe so. Uh, I know Ajax came with uh, me um, on one of my visits. For, for when? Today. Oh, okay. Um... Yeah, Ajax would would go if we need to, or we need him to. I mean, I guess that's for all of us to, to decide. I mean, I have to go, and I don't know who else wants to go. I would like to. Um, Quinn's been sort of looking out the window a little bit, kind of just, you know, uh, swirling, swirling her glass around in midair, and she looks at you and she says, uh, go where? Well, thank you for uh, participating in the classroom discussion. I'm going to see the <laughs> Magus, of, uh, Magus Elvalor at the college. Magus Elvalor at the college, yes. Justinian's college. Just in axe college. Fresh. Ah. My axe college. Uh, did you drop out? This was established in session one. Yes. Ah. <laughs> you know the mouths, you know. Terrible memories. Hmm. Yes, I dropped out because of the elves. <laughs> no, I dropped out because I'm poor, Ajax. How much? How much is the tuition? <laughs> a lot more than I was stealing to make rent at the time. Hmm. Should have stepped up your efforts. Well, there's this thing called. I used to be really bad at taking things. There's You're a learning magic curve, school. You know? Is this uh, the Magus? What is he's 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 giving a lecture? Uh, have you not been paying attention in the last week? <laughs> Armand Sarko will be giving a lecture, and we wish to get the college's help to capture him, or if not, kill him. Magnus Elvalor is the one person we know on the inside that can probably help us accomplish this. Oh, is that is that is that tomorrow? Yes. Oh, well, what are we waiting for? Let's get ready to go. This is very important. Or do you think you're up for it? I don't know if you had too much to drink last night. Ah, uh, there was nothing else to do here. Uh, Ajax, it's a very nice place, but you really need, you need some entertainment. <laughs> Shoshana just... <clears throat> <laughs> oh, Shoshana, when did you get here? <laughs> She's been here the whole time, Alice. <laughs> I know, I know. Uh, Ajax kind of rubs the back of his neck and goes and says, Aw, oh, I'm sure we could go and pick a fight. No, 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 I mean some uh, musicians or a juggler or something, something to pass the time. 
Ajax kind of looks around the room and goes and says, I I I'm still down for the fight. I will. Uh, there haven't been many. I will. I will. I will watch, but I will put the coin on you. No worries. I'm not allowed to fight here. Oh come sure now! You are. You're the only person who can't be kicked out. Yes, you're the owner. You must. You must get this started. <laughs> Actually, uh, Ajax is the one who judges. And um, uh, Ajax. Do not forget the third rule. If it, this is your first night at Fight Club, you have to fight. Who needs a judge for a fight? The last one standing is the winner. <clears throat> there are rules. Oh, well, that sounds boring. <laughs> Street fighting and uh, fighting are different. I must is, prefer the straight fight. This is an establishment. If I want to keep the guards out and out of my hair, there have to be rules. Well, Ajax, you have this lovely area and kind of gesturing over here. We could have the illegal fights back there and the more civilized stuff out in the front room. Uh. Yes, because you always want to make sure you have a little bit of blood inside of your... Uh, your pie. Ah, I like seeing this one. I know I like this one. It just kind of looks at you incredulously. <laughs> sips her tea. Uh, mm. So about this party. What party? Uh, 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 er, not, not the party. The, um, Meeting. The meeting, yeah. As I said, I thought I'd bring it to everyone's attention that um, the meeting will take place today. I will be going with Lucia and the witness, and the offer is there for anyone who wants to come with. Well, if we have a chance to. Go, but I don't know shit about magic. Oh, come, Ajax. I'm sure there will be people to punch. Well, that's fair. We're Hopefully going to not. a magic school. And we're supposed uh, to be getting their help. I don't think we want to be punching anyone. All right, hold on a second. So we're going to talk to Magus now to get invited to the thing the next day. And to, to get their help, hopefully get their we're help. We're trying to go and enlist their aid. Um, Set up an ambush, basically. Yeah. Okay, yeah, because I want to see Ajax punch Armand in the face. Oh, we'll get there. Yeah, I want to. Don't you worry. Yeah, I want to. Don't see you that. worry. <laughs> that's that's coming up. Yes. And then we're gonna right. tie him to a chair and have uh, Arco explain the five hundred his five hundred favorite things about Bahamut. <laughs> you know, I, uh, actually, um, <clears throat> Arco would I probably only take a mage chair is uh, only only his top one hundred, probably not five hundred. <laughs> <laughs> Not to start. A little bit of restraint. Yeah, you, you gotta pay for all 500. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Were you gonna try and say something for him? I was just thinking I should have taken Mage Slayer. Oh well. Mage Later. Slayer's pretty cool. No, yeah, there's always next time. Fighter. <laughs> yes. Um, Ajax, there is one spell you know. I do? Yes, you cast Fist. <laughs> well, there's a, a few spells he knows. Yeah, of course. Yeah, I don't think Ajax actually goes and thinks of them as spells. They're just... Haha! -ha. I don't know, <laughs> yeah. It's just like, look what I can do! Yeah. Magical incantations. Um, Bibbidi Bobbidi Boo, it is you who I will punch. <laughs> <laughs> I, I believe it's more Bibbidi Bobbidi Fuck You. <laughs> exactly. Um, Bibbidi Bobbidi Boo, take your lumps and fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, um, 
So there's no real there's there's no real limit as to who goes today, though, correct? No, Mad Madcap brought everyone together, one to give out the earrings, and two just who wants to come to this meeting. Mm -hmm. No one has okay. to go. Madcap can go on his own, but who wants to come with? Uh, Ajax will go along. Um, I'm thinking that you know a show of a show of force may not hurt considering we're going to a magic school and it's just like well I can take care of you with one spell well if there's a bunch of people there it's a little harder to go and take care of all of them with one spell I don't think more. there's particularly a threat here no not necessarily but we don't know the temperament of the dude um, haven't you talked to him before oh, he did they seemed very cordial Right. Much. I don't know, I guess cordial cordial to me is just kind of that cold kind of politeness. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Well, plus, think of it this way. If you, if you do get them on your side, uh, it would be a good idea to then strategize, and I can show you some of the, the campus map that I have, and you might be able to uh, plan some stuff around that, potentially. That's true. So, Ajax being a former mercenary might be pretty good at strategy. Yeah, we could definitely go and do that. Alright, uh, yeah, Ajax will go and tag along. Okay. So we've got Ajax, Madcap, his Pigeon Man said he was going, right? Yeah. Anybody else? Nope. Uh, yeah, I mean, uh, you know. Might, might as well go for the, uh... For the lulls. <laughs> I don't know what to say. Okay. I'm sorry. Uh, can you please repeat that? What did you just say, Alice? I for said what? I'm going to go for the lulls. Oh, okay, okay. I had to make sure that I heard you correctly. What did you think I said? No, I I know you said for the lulls. Oh, okay. I just wanted to make sure that you were going to say it again. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> sure. So, Marcos um, the Odd Man out. Does he want to go or no? Uh, yeah. Okay. Everybody's going. Excellent. Um, Miss, Mr. J-Bob. Yes. Would I have any, uh, you know, useful knowledge of this school or of, um, Magus Elvalor? You didn't study here. You studied no. in, um, uh, Phelan. That's yes. where you went. Yeah. Um, which means you would have gone and studied at, uh, no, not the Cobalt sanctum let me uh, let me check my backstory and see if you actually I don't think me. I actually have a thing for a, a mage uh, a bard college there yeah I just have one of the bard colleges on the Isle of Phelan yeah so it's a community Amos. school <laughs> <laughs> honestly with like the way Phelan is there's probably like one every couple of islands mm. so uh, because it's a very large archipelago um um, actually, it is uh, Archip uh, <laughs> Archipelago. <laughs> I can't even. Archipelago. <laughs> God damn it. <laughs> um, so yeah, it's honestly not that important right now. Um, but yeah, as far as uh, since you've been in Marduk for a very long time, you would know that uh, the Marduk Academy of Arts and Arcana is um, long-standing place. It's been a part of the city for a very long time. Uh, but they kind of—it's kind of a jack of all trades kind of school. Uh, they teach uh, all different forms of wizard wizard magic, uh, like the traditional schools and things like that. They teach alchemy. They teach bardic arts. Um, they teach um, natural born ma mages like sorcerers uh, how to control their abilities in more of a kind of martial arts kind of um, uh, discipline, I guess. They they kind of approach it in that direction. Uh, while also trying to instill some of the academics into them. It's just kind of like a big mage school. Sure. Um, and you didn't go to the meeting to uh, that Madcap and Ajax did at one point, so... Uh, but just to refresh them there, uh, Ervalor is um, the head of the divination uh, school, basically. 
so he's like one of their their top guys and he also specializes in uh cryptography and other you know that sort of thing mm -hmm. um so now everybody makes their way there just put us to the city map for now head over to uh the barracks uh, where Lucia is. I think you said you were going to do that first and then go to the uh, yes. hideout. Okay. So she's already waiting outside. So you just kind of pass by and she nods and greets the rest of you and she's in her guard uniform. Um, and and Madcap is in his guard uniform. Yeah, you got your jacket on. Hell yeah. Looking sick. Um, Ooh. you make your way over. Hmm? Um, can I be wearing um, um, like well-to-do city clothes with um, uh, Councilwoman Ravencrown's jacket? Sure, no. of course. Okay, <laughs> Perfect. And I'm actually like, do you, now, do you wear a hat, Twitch? Uh, she does not usually wear a hat. No. Okay, I just, I just, I picture her in a, a Lady Dima Tiramisu hat, like President. <laughs> oh shit! Nice, the big, like, like kind of Donnie mommy hat. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, um retcon I have a hat. <laughs> like a you have like a sun hat on. When when she's in like full on like scary witch mode, she's got the uh the cloak with the hood. Yeah. All right. So, then you make your way over to the hideout uh, and you inform them that you're going to meet with them. Um and Ilfina comes out. She's you know, dressed as well as one could expect. Not exactly spare clothes, but uh, she's cleaned herself up fairly well. And um, you can you can see that uh, she still has the bandages wrapped around her arm, though uh, they're very clean. So it looks like this might be a, a fresh wrap on these. And she just kind of looks around. And, All right, well, let's go. Who uh, who at the academy are we meeting with? I plan to meet with uh, Magus Elvalor. I've met with him a couple times before. Good. I was hoping you would say that, just in case they don't believe me with his capabilities. He'd be able to at least confirm them. Uh, and I would want to quickly hop, just pop in and talk to Levingham. Sure. Yes, what is it? Uh, so the operation was a success, I take it? On her, yes. Um, when I plan to go with the other ones, I would prefer if uh, the the Ajax's fiance were here. Her detection abilities are useful. They make it so that we are more accurate in our incisions, and we are not wasting time looking for where the crystals are specifically. So. We're giving them some time to rest up before doing this again, since a lot of them, the wounds are still fresh. But, uh, do inform her that I will be needing her services again soon. Should be able to be arranged. Um, do you have the remnants that you, uh, surgically removed? I do. And were there, are they still functional pieces of residual? Yes. They are, though they are much smaller than, uh, well, yeah, they, they vary in size, but most of them are of a small size. If you want them, that's perfectly fine, but um, we might be able to use them as well. A, a single small piece, just as evidence, would probably have benefited us. Very well. Gives you one. There you, there are. you are. Thank you. Um... Should this happen tomorrow, feel free to say no, but um, would you wish to partake in the event that what might unfold? I think it's best that my return from the dead be uh, kept a secret for now. Besides, I'm also not going to be of much help in a dire situation as I am still down an arm. It would be very difficult for me to cast in combat. I thought I'd bring it up, but I understood. Right. Believe me, I appreciate the offer, but were I 
hole again. I probably would have taken you up on that. It'll be safer this way, though. And uh, we're looking into it. Yes, of course. And that reminds me of the other thing I need to talk to Arco about. Mm. And? So, uh, Arco, so I had asked you to, to ask your priest as to, to powerful regenerative, regenerative magic uh, to help loving ham out. So I'm wondering if uh, they got to word to you as to a possible cost and time frame for that. Uh, they have not. Uh, Janos Novak, the high priest there, uh, has sent word to um, the Platinum Sanctuary over in Almaria, which is the headquarter, the largest temple, the headquarters of Bahamut. Um, and that would be where like clerics of that magnitude would be, and he, that message is going to take a while to get there. But once he gets it, once it gets there, he should be able to get a quote, basically, uh, very, very soon. Doesn't that dude know sending? Um, he does, but he doesn't know any of the people there by name um, uh, or, or face. Because he's been here most of his time. time. Unlike, unlike... Um, unlike the paladins, the, the priests don't make their, their pilgrimage to the headquarters. Okay, at least it's in the works. Yeah. We can so get they, the yeah, you'll you'll get that in a in a f probably a few weeks or a week. Jesus, so this is not gonna happen any time for him to be useful. Yeah. Well at the very least, um because he, he's having to send it through mundane means. Uh once once they get word and he gets like the quote and everything like that, he'll tell you and if that's good then passing things along will be much easier. And when they send it, um, they, they would likely be able to send it through magical means as well. So, there are some limitations, but there are. It'll probably take about as much time as it would if you went with the uh, uh, any of the other ways. It's just um, how expensive is it going to be? And how much right. risk is there for yeah, failure? But we can't know how expensive it is going to be for weeks. Which, if it's going to take, take the same amount of time, we could take this, do we take the chance of buying the the thing from Hostal for mm -hmm. the price we have, and it's going to take the same amount of time, but at least we know the price up front. Whereas yeah. if it's yeah. an unreasonable price for this, we wait weeks, then we have to wait weeks for Hostal. That's true, yeah. Done, done, done. We can discuss later. Yeah. Either way. So. Alrighty. Now that you have everybody gathered together, take the short trip to the Academy Gates. You make your way there. There are a few uh, red sashes. Uh, it's like two flanking the, the gate. They see uh, a captain come up, and they stand at attention. You have official business here, Captain. That I do. Open up. Uh, of course, of course. They make their way there. Open it up. No problems at all. That's not to uh, piss off your commanding off a commanding officer. You make your way inside, and with Madcap's memory. Uh, you make your way to where um, Arvalor's uh, office would be. Can, can we just walk up to the office, or do we have to check into this receptionist? Or um, Check in with the receptionist, but it goes really quick, because you have a, cap, uh, a guard captain there. Just okay. says it's official guard business, and they're like, of course, uh, he's in right now. Uh, and you make your way there. Eventually, go in his office. Uh, getting everybody in is a uh, it's a little little cramped, but um, everybody is able to fit in there. He goes, ah, uh, to what do I owe this uh, large gathering? Would Lucia want to speak? Uh, she'll introduce every. She'll go. Megas Arvalor, Captain Lucia of the Blue Sashes. I'm a bit out of my normal 
area, but something has come to my attention that I believe must be brought to your attention as well. We have here a witness to unspeakable crimes by a guest of your academy, one who plans on speaking here soon. I believe the rest of them will be able to explain it far better than I, but in, to ensure that everything is going through official channels, I will be here and offering their offering endorsement as well and backing up all of their claims. Ah, of course. Um, so that sounds very serious. What, um, what appears to be the problem? Well, Magus, it's nice to see you again. Yes, I assume the notes that we provided uh, helped in your recent uh, investigation. Uh, more than you can possibly imagine. Well, that's good. Well, do keep in mind that when you have no longer need of those uh, materials I gave you, to please return them at your earliest convenience. But if you still need them, that's fine. DM, just for just clarification, I did send them via courier. Oh, you did? Okay. Oh, yes. Okay, six. And, uh, I'll rewind. And, uh, thank you for returning those, uh, materials as well. They, uh, have very... It's very good to have them on staff, just in case. Of course, they're very useful tools. Um, I don't know if you would recognize, uh, the young lady here. Uh, let's see. Oh, that's really fucking good. Hi, Alfina. I... You're, you're alive and, well, a lot of us had feared the worst. Yes, that's exactly what I'm here to talk about, sir. Oh, please, enough of the formalities. You've been through a lot, I imagine. What, what's, what's happened? Um, do you explain or do you let her explain? Probably just let her explain. Okay. So she goes through... The, everything that she remembers, her her kidnapping, where she was taken, and many of the things that were done to her, and uh, describing Ottoman Sarko in as much detail as she can. The Magus looks in horror and disbelief as she's recounting these very, very uncomfortable and gruesome details. When she gets to the bit talking about the surgery on her arms, I bring out that piece and put it on his desk. He takes a look at it and goes, And this came out of you. She goes, and she kind of pulls back her sleeve, showing her uh, bandages. Yes. Oh, this is serious accusations indeed. If you don't believe me, then look into my mind. You'll see that I am telling the truth. I know you have that capability. So, no, no, no. It's, it's nothing of the sort. I do believe you. That's the part that troubles me the most. So, I assume then you are here to do something about this then. Looking through the rest of you. We, are. we know he is going to be here tomorrow. Yes, he's scheduled to have a, uh, give a secondary lecture on his uh, conjuration theories and other things of that nature. Interesting stuff, as I have attended a few before, but now I feel sick to my stomach thinking about that. Yes, I've um, actually read a book of his from his collection. Interesting stuff indeed. Um, well, I, I wouldn't be surprised if he uses these opportunities to find his his targets. We've rescued a total of five of your students from him. The other four will be undergoing similar surgeries to remove the um, infiltrates from them and we're hoping to keep them their presence in the city a secret until mr sarko is dealt with well that is good so you brought this to my attention what do you plan on doing about it well Captain, we want your help to assure of his uh, being taken care of. Oh, 
he is a very powerful mage indeed, and if he is capable of even half of the things that he claims to be, and has fiends at his beck and call, well, our assist your assistance would be useful, I imagine, and besides, I am certain many of you have a score to settle with this man. We might be able to do something. We... I could take a look at the registry of students who have signed up for this lecture and inform them that it is being rescheduled. That, But not inform Mr. Sarko. That will mean you will enter the lecture hall and nobody will be there. That might be an opportunity for you to ambush him. We can have the rest of us ready to go, either outside or nearby, should anything awry happen. Um, and offer assistance where we can. Quinn would clear her throat and go... <clears throat> yes. Uh, forgive me, but this Sarka is uh, very very um, very intelligent. Are we not afraid that canceling this event would not uh, get back to him? Any one of these students might let it slip. Tipping our hand. It's possible, but I would not want any of them to get potentially caught in the crossfire. If he is as dangerous and conniving as you say, I don't think any of my... I do not think he would hesitate to harm any of these students were he put into a corner. No, it's true, but I wonder I, I wonder if you or your very powerful teachers would be able to protect the students should things go awry. That is why they will that is why many of us and our more experienced uh, teachers and um, campus guards will be able, will be on standby. But in doing but away from his prying eyes. Hmm. We'll be able to keep people protected should uh, uh, well, should he start dropping fireballs on the place, I have a feeling we'll be able to at least keep collateral damage to a minimum. If that is what you are concerned about. If I'm not thinking on the same wavelength as you, please correct me. Um, Quinn sort of straightens up a little bit and says, yes, collateral damage. Very concerning. Yes. <laughs> How many usually attend the lectures? Well, the lecture halls themselves, uh, the one that he typically uses, can hold upwards of 50 people. Well, actually, hold on. Let me look at the map real quick. That sounds too high. It can hold five people. Hmm. Comfortably, 20, but uh, more space can be allocated should a larger, should a larger attendance uh, be necessary, uh, be required. Worst case, we just move them, we just move, uh, move around the lecture halls if it gets too bad. Well, would he be suspicious walking into an empty room? Well, with any luck, he would... Hmm. Perhaps Actually, a... I had... Yeah, please. Oh, go ahead. I was, I was just thinking perhaps a greater illusion, some something to, it would not stand up to scrutiny, but it would get him through the door. That's what I was thinking. Yes. Yeah. To produce illusionary students in the room, some kind of animated illusion to make it seem like a full lecture hall. And wow, we could be among them idea. if you have the ability for also illusion to make us look like students in the same room. That could be arranged. Might need two of our uh, more experienced illusionists to do the same thing. I think I know what you're getting at. I think you're thinking uh, have somebody cast seeming on you, and then maybe like what hallucinatory terrain or something. Ooh. I think uh, that or just uh, yes. I mean something like that. I... Well, I think to get everybody to look. Like, seeming yes, yes, that's seeming, seeming yeah. Um, 
but I don't know exact. I don't know what it might be. Um, Let me look at hallucinatory terrain. I don't know if that can produce people. I think that can only affect the environment. It specifically says 150 foot cube. Uh, yeah, I think this is specific to um, landscape stuff. <clears throat> Let's look at illusion spells. What do we have that be done? Major major image might be able to do it. Oh uh, yeah, cube. it's a twenty foot cube there. I mean, I'd be surprised if the you know Magus didn't have some custom spell that would do the trick. It's possible. I'm just trying to see what there is that I could base it off of without being like bullshitty. Yeah. Uh, There's one I'm thinking. Of. Programmed illusion. Oh. That's what I was thinking of. Uh, 30 okay. foot cube. Until it's spelled. And seeming is just 8 hours. So you could actually get that. Uh, you would still probably need two people for that because I don't think wizards get two 6 level spells until very high levels. And there would be nobody in that range at this college. Seeming is 5th level. Seeming is 5th? Oh, I thought it was 6th. Is it six? Is it not six? It's fifth. Huh. Okay. Well, then maybe you could only need one. Yeah. No. Wizards don't get uh, a second sixth level until nineteenth level. It's like yeah. No. There's, yeah, there's like... nobody around that high. <laughs> well, it's a good thing this is a wizard school then. <laughs> yeah. What you lack in quality, you make up for in quantity. Mm -hmm. Let's and any additional boons you or your um, colleagues could bestow upon us before entering this fight would be appreciated. <laughs> Sarko takes the stage and meh, and um, Pigeon stands up and says, How dare you stand where he stood? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Sorry. So, all right. I think that could be worked out. I could speak to... Uh, I had illusionist. I will be able to produce such a thing once I inform the rest of the staff of what's happening. It could be done. That will at least catch him off guard initially. Uh, I do have a question. Have any of the staff acted oddly as of late, unlike themselves? I only bring this up because we were in a, uh, a place very recently where um, this fiend summoned by this Sarko had taken the place of prominent figures and disguised themselves as such. Ah, well, that is most troubling. Though, with any luck, that is what the Arathis clergy is heading out, has headed out to do. Uh, they take have. Care of. Ah, good. Well? I mean, a simple... I believe um, my colleague here, as he motions towards Quen... I had discovered that um, simple detect magic uh, gave a uh, distinct aura around the uh, creature, and, you know, showing off that it had been n unnatural. Hmm. Hmm. Not that I can recall. Everybody seems to be relatively on the the up and up. Have Just a been... word of caution. I'm sure it's within your capabilities to to do something similar. Um, before you divulge information to everyone. I could have a few of our uh, abjurists. Um, wait, is abjuration... That's, that's uh, divination. Oh, oh, it's a divination. Okay, yeah. Well, I suppose I could have some of my fellow diviners uh, walk the campus grounds with uh, similar magics. If anything does come up, we can hopefully deal with it, or at the very least be aware that it might be a problem since we are doing this on such short notice. And, uh, speaking of notice, what time is his lecture tomorrow? Oh, excuse me. Uh, a little bit later than we are having our meeting now, so a bit further into the afternoon. So we have a solid, at minimum, 24 hours. Good. So at least give us enough time to do any minor preparations and get people away from areas of combat. But uh, 
I suppose you might want to have a look at the campus grounds for entry, exits, and all manner of other things. Oh, definitely. Yeah. All right. Well, let me move you guys over to the map, and you guys get a free preview of this. Uh, it's all oh. going to be... It's all dark. Give me one second to... Make sure it's actually on reveal for once. Ooh. It's a big. It's a big map. You might have to zoom out quite a bit. And I would give him the names of the students we rescued. Uh, and tell him to keep that to himself, but that these are the students that were rescued, including Priscilla Nass. Okay. Ooh. So, uh, this okay, up here is the lecture hall in question that Sarko's... Uh, Thing is going to be given top at top left. You're saying, yeah. Gotcha. At yeah, the top, top left. The meeting that you guys are in, you guys would be on the second floor, uh, which uh, is our different assets. I don't have that on here right now, but you know, you're probably somewhere above the library, probably. And you said it was in, in this, yeah. Room? Okay. So that's where he's going to be. Um, These walls this, are made of what? Wood, uh, stone? stone. Made stone? of stone. Yeah. All right. Uh, so the places that I have like marked. Uh, so this, all these different rooms here are all different lecture halls. Uh, this is their cafeteria, basically. Uh, this is a, like, admin offices and a conference room uh, for faculty. Uh, this is, like, student affairs, basically. Uh, these are, like, um, I mean, not, like, guidance counselors or something, but, you know, a student-adjacent uh, thing. Uh, these are usually the uh, check-in areas. Um... And then, like all these like side areas are like, la are like workshops and laboratories that or uh, storage rooms typically. So is so the is... Magus giving us like a tour? Yeah, he's kind of like let taking you through the, uh, the the campus grounds and just kind of showing you like what the path would be that he would take uh, to get here. Most likely, uh, what rooms are what. Mm -hmm. um, May I do an insight check on him just to see if he's all on the up and up? Yeah, sure. Go ahead. Uh, Eighteen. Seems very genuine. He's very concerned about uh, his students and his mm. and the safety of things, and he wants to make sure that you guys have uh, as much information as possible. Uh, at, it, also, considering that you have brought all of this to his attention, um, it would behoove him to give you as much knowledge is possible okay. knowledge is power after all yes i was i was wondering if 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 we were getting any like oh shit they're onto us vibe from this guy but no no not from him you do get some weird curious looks from people as you're passing by but mostly like of just like uh, who the hell are these people kind of mm. looks mostly like other students and what look like some faculty does anyone, anyone, anyone does anyone recognize justinian uh that's a good question does Justinian have any uh, old friends here? No, they're all young friends. <laughs> 89. No. Unfortunately, whether fortunately or unfortunately, nobody uh, that you pass seems to recognize uh, Justinian Nask from his uh, brief time there. Justinian lets out a <sighs> sigh of relief. <laughs> <laughs> Um, any of the people, of the students and stuff, anyone seem kind of nervous or giving us any longer looks? No. I mean, other than the just, like, okay, there's a tiny person, hmm. a big buff bald guy, and yeah. an elf with a lot of piercings. <laughs> uh, someone who... <laughs> someone who... <laughs> Who <laughs> looks like my younger brother, and uh, a big fucking dragonborn and a guard captain walking through the halls. Yeah, I mean that would obviously attract attention. Yeah, just another Tuesday, apparently. Yeah. Just like people are people are just looking at you weird just because of this is a weird sight. 
Um, I would say, as we're walking to Magus Elvalor, um, I would say, you know, um, um, I did study at one of the Bard colleges in the Isles of Phelan, far from here. Ah, well, I've heard uh, good things about many of those different colleges, each of them having uh, different specialties from what I understand. Yes, yes, yes. My uh, aunt was someone of a very minor title, um, hmm. which, I, which uh, and I moved here, you know, about 50 years or so ago. Um, certainly have learned uh, a lot about the, the Bardic Arts. I see you teach them here. That we do. We teach all manner of uh, different arts and magical practices, as oftentimes those go hand in hand in some cases. Yes, if you, if, um, um, and uh, she would kind of, uh, you know, make a gesture and say, um, um, Lady Quintrith Cohen Green and the last still day at your service, Megas. Make your acquaintance. If you ever find, uh, you know, you need, an, you have an opening for an adjunct professor of the Bardic Arts, please do keep me in mind. There is no uh, greater honor than to teach. Make a persuasion check. Sure. Always be networking. God, I was thinking about re-enrolling, and if Quine gets a job, maybe not. Uh, I should use my inspiration. Damn. <laughs> well. Well, he, he rolled pretty bad, too. Oh. He'll go. Well, uh, I mean, it seems like you have more important things to be working on at the moment. But... Down the road, down the road. Yes, if something if something comes up and we are in desperate need of replacement or <laughs> don't, assistance... Don't have I'll to say it like that to make it. Okay, so so w with the earrings, um, it's a telepathic bond. I can pinch it and talk to everyone. Uh, yes, sure, why not? Well, let me. I, I didn't mean to. I mean, I read it. I just no. Wanted. I just I don't remember what I. Creatures who wear ones can they, they can communicate with one another by pinching the earring with the free hand. Yeah, I would just when he says desperate need, I pinch it and I go, "What a dick." <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I, I pinch uh, I pinch my earring back and say, you know, if I re-enroll and you're my substitute, I'm skipping class. That day. <laughs> I did say I um, I did say adjunct. <laughs> yes, well, I I will ensure that uh, should openings arise or need arise, I'll be sure to reach out. I mean, you know. It's just like some of the other faculty, like, you know, like, what's the... It's also not really his department, so it's just like, yeah, sure. It's like you're talking to, uh... It's like you're, you're asking about getting a job from somebody who, you know, like, mops the floors. <laughs> it's like that kind of disconnect. Wait, he, um, mo wait, he mops the floors? Well, well, no, uh, okay, maybe that was... It's like you're asking a biology professor to get you into the the, the drama school. Okay, wait, wait. Yeah, wait, 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 wait. Yeah, Hold on. Better. Well, isn't the Magus in charge? He's like Dumbledore, right? He's in charge of the whole thing? No, he's um, he's the head of the the divination teachers. Basically. Oh, I thought I'm. Uh, he's, he's the he's the head diviner. I thought he was the head of the whole school. But being head diviner is a very prestigious position because that means you basically know almost everything that goes on around here. Um, so if anybody, if you're gonna talk to anybody who's in charge of anything, outside of like the headmaster, this guy is like the guy to talk to. Um, I would ask him for the name of the head of the Bardic College. Head of the Bardic Arts. Okay. It's open up fantasy name generator. <laughs> <laughs> I at least know what their race is. Uh, they are a half elf. Obviously. Yeah, because half elves are. The best for charisma classes. I will, I will, I will ignore your slight against my people. <laughs> I mean, they get a plus two to charisma. What do, what do uh, the fucking regular elves get? Yeah, I'm already at the twenty. What Un the? F <laughs> what do you want me to be at twenty two? Do regular do regular elves get plus two charisma or do they get plus two? No, plus, they get plus, two dex. plus two decks. Plus two decks. Plus two decks. And um. Plus two decks and plus one. Uh, and a wood elf gets plus one wisdom. Yeah. Yeah. Fucking wood elves. Uh, 
That would be uh bonus to that tracking skill, yo. That uh the head of the Botic uh <laughs> headmaster of the Botic uh divisions would be uh Doros Halgot. Okay. I will spell that out for you because it is Wait. not intuitive. Wait, hold on, hold on. You ready? How close did I get? Uh you're missing one R. Okay, I wasn't too far off. <laughs> yeah, no, it's actually pretty close, okay. <laughs> I, I think he's a Doris. I'm like, that's a fucking boring name. Doris. <laughs> Doros. <laughs> Boris and Doris. Anybody get, oh. anybody get that reference? I, there's there's an NPC with the name Boris, and he's a fucking he's fucking awesome. Yeah. But he's not in this part of the world, unfortunately. Um. So just I just yeah. Sorry, go. Ahead. No, go ahead. Go ahead. Oh, just, just, make just so nobody thinks I'm wasting time. Uh, Quint is later going to write this person a letter asking them to meet just for lunch and just do some network. okay some networking. Sure. That's all. <laughs> all right. Excellent. Climb up that climb up that ladder. I mean, you know, part time professor would certainly be a feather in her ostentatious. Um, what do you say, Cobra? It's the um, the. Mummy vampire, what is it? What would you say it was? Lady Dimitrescu, yeah. Yeah. Uh, Lady de, de, Well, I, I don't know how to say it, so I call it Lady de Tiramisu. You said something that rhymed, though. What was it? Oh, Dami Mommy. Dami Mommy, in, yeah, in, <laughs> in her ostentatious Dami uh, Mommy. Yeah. I've I, seen so many cutscenes of that game, and I'm just like, man, I wonder how many of these cutscenes were less sexually charged in the first draft. Yeah, um, I like the meme where it's like, oh, they tried to make like a real scary character, and and it's just like, oh, mommy vampire, hold me. Yeah, it's just, it's just <laughs> fucking, it's just everybody, everybody on the internet's a fucking bottom, apparently. <laughs> so step on me, dummy, mommy. <laughs> <laughs> I love the mod that somebody made for that game that gives you a fly swatter. You like slap her ass. <laughs> it's just, she turns around, and just fucking kills you. <laughs> Yeah, I'm, uh, I'm, stupid I'm... man thing. Mm. All right. So, anyways, um, so you've gotten kind of your overview of where uh, everything is, and um, you know all that good stuff. Um, so to kind of show you the path that Sarko would likely take to get to the lecture hall would be kind of like this. Uh, I'm going to use the measure tool and just kind of. Hmm. We go through here, yeah. and then kind of either this entrance or this entrance, and would come in this way. Mm -hmm. Um. So is this is this to scale? Uh, yes, it is to scale. So any illusion would probably be like thirty feet by thirty feet. The -ish. programmed illusion is a thirty foot cube, there and you since go. you're just trying to get the bleach, like the most of the the chairs, they should be able to get most of it to at least make it look mostly full. Hmm. We should probably have real, real people like you know, like a couple of us or decoys or something sitting by the door, just you know, as he walks by them. I think that oh, yeah. We'll all be in the room and we'll be disguised as students. Nice. Yes. I mean, you, you like those of you who can who can do the magic yourselves can do it, um, if you want, or could just like Mad Cap can't do that. So. Yeah. Well. Um the mage who will be the illusionist who will be doing this does have the capability of doing seeming so if you just want to get that done before uh setting up they can do that as well yeah i could is this, I is this a lectern uh it's like a it's like a desk uh and there would be like a lectern off to the side uh that's just not on the assets um quen pinches her earring again and says could we put the bomb in the lectern a magical some sort of an arcane explosive I'll look into it. <laughs> <laughs> I'll make a few calls. We're, we're coming in here to, to stop a dangerous criminal. Hey, can we put a bomb in this room? <laughs> I got the guy. <laughs> I mean, well, honestly, like a glyph of warning with like whole person on it. I mean, it's not going to one shot him, but it'll, you know, <laughs> mess up his day. <laughs> well, I mean, that, that's like, that's something we can ask because Madcap was going to ask about a couple things, but that's actually a really good idea. Ah. Glyph of warning with whole person in it. Yeah. Well, yeah, they can do that. Oh. But Madcap would also ask out uh, if there's any kind of ward they can put on this to prevent uh, 
uh, teleportation. So there's no way for him to get out. And then when they close the doors to lock them, when he comes oh, inside. Silence. Well, Quinn can cast that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And she. Okay. Oh, yeah. Okay. Be... Uh, I'm, I'm pulling up my spell asset so I can put Glyph of Warding down. Um, I can, uh... like. I can actually pre cast it. Well, hold on a minute. He'd notice when he walks into it, though. Uh, Probably, yeah. There'd be yeah. no more ambient sound or anything. Yeah. Yeah. Be like, hmm, normally these children are talkative. Hmm. Uh, what the, which fucking one is it? I wish I could, like, rename these things in my library. Uh, it's not the animated. Ask press the digitation and just have, uh, general background noise. But if press prestidigitation, but if prestidigitation makes sound, uh, in a silence, it's oh, it doesn't yeah. matter. Mm. The program delusion can have sound though, so you're you're good on that front. Yeah. Fuck, it's so cool. Called? Mm. Uh, oh, but if it's program delusion that's doing all this, wouldn't there be sound there of of students chatting and? Well, yeah, that's what phones? I'm saying. So that's what I'm saying. The program. Yeah, the program delusion will be able to per perform sound, but as soon as the silence goes up, then they're gonna he's gonna Oh go. yeah. I keep thinking of it as like a psychic uh nah. sensation, not a Why physical so one. Alright, whatever, I'll find this later. You know, fuck it, I'm just gonna take it from the animated arcane circles. Fuck it. We'll put a put a blue one down. There we go. Boop. Let's put it right here, where the uh, glyph of warding would be. That's some fancy shit. Yeah. I, mean, I was thinking put like put it like on the. Oh yeah. Probably. At the desk. Like 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 under it. You know what I mean. So like yeah, so when he steps up to it and you know like his feet will touch it. Yeah, we'll just put it on the carpet. How about that? <laughs> yes. yes. And one thing I want to do is like, just just remember like when we get there, like I want to like leave like a small like like paint like painted silver axe, just like out of like a <laughs> paper right there. So when he gets there, like, goes, mother fuck. <laughs> like when that thing goes off, and like he can just see that piece of paper, he's like. Well, fuck. Don't we want to uh, fuck with him? We'll first ask ask him some questions. Let him start his little lecture. We could. No, we beat him to death, and then we do that. Hmm. So, put a little note on there. Glyph of Warding has a little person on it. And then you're talking about uh, either talking about something that can prevent uh, teleportation. Yeah, can the spell that Levingham cast, that Sanctum spell, do that? I don't think Private Sanctum can, let me, but let me double check. So many spells do so much shit, it's hard, you, like, you can't keep track of it. Mm-hmm. Uh... Choose any or all of the following properties. Sound can't pass through the barrier, the barrier is warded, it appears dark and foggy. Sensors created by divination spells can't appear inside. Uh, creatures in the area can't be targeted by divination spells. Nothing can teleport into or out of the warded area. The planar uh, travel is blocked within yeah, the area. Well, yeah, we want that. We want that casted on the area. I mean, they would have rooms in this uh, campus that have permanent private sanctums on them, so yeah, they could do that too. That means no teleporting, no demon summoning. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, there's no uh, apparition in or out of Hogwarts grounds. <laughs> yeah, well, he's not playing by their rules. I thought that was just a rule, not a actual fact of law. It, yeah, it's it's just a rule because they do it all the time by the by the end of the the series. Yeah, we want the guidelines. To... Yeah, more like guidelines than actual rules. Okay, interesting. All right, well, let me draw that up. And then when he gets inside, if they can, like, cast an arcane lock on the doors, 
and we'd have a like a code word to to be let out. Yeah. The password. Yeah, it's the code. The the password can be monkey slut. <laughs> Wait, what? Monkey slut? I mean, how often is how often is that going to come in, uh, up in normal conversation? That's fair. <laughs> You'll suggest that, and they look very quizzical, but then you give the explanation, and they're like, "Oh yeah, makes sense." It's a it's a reference from the show Misfits. Oh okay. Put that on. Map there's, there's that so, there's, it's a group of kids, and it's like there's this outsider who can turn it like change like shape change into them, and like we need okay. a password. And one of like, the the shithead character is like monkey slide. I'm like what? <laughs> How oh, is it gonna come in conversation? <laughs> later on, like the you know they use it, but they use it with the person, so like yeah, they catch them, but then the person knows about the password. So people not in the conversation show up like monkey slut. No monkey slut's blown. <laughs> <laughs> ah, it's blown. <laughs> nice. It's All right. Nice. Okay. So yeah, they'll do that and only put the the planar travel one on. That way, uh, nothing seems awry. Planar travel and teleportation. Yeah, the planar travel and teleportation. And that way, nothing appears awry. Okay. Anybody else have any uh, ideas? No. Hmm. Maybe also the one where they can't be targeted by divination. Okay. Yeah. That's fine. Um, and then day of, if they can give us any kind of protection, death ward, or. Uh, I actually have a thing for that. So, you know, like those combat parameters I do. Uh, yeah. I have one that is beneficial to you that will give you some custom things that you can use. Dope. All right. Excellent. Well, if they're. Last chance. Is there any other preparatory things that you want to do with this? Hmm. This is an enemy we must not underestimate, but I think we've prepared well. Uh, do you do you have alchemy? Any any potions we could uh, be gifted? Dash around the room. Ah, if you uh, need some healing potions, I could check in with our alchemy department, see if they have any to spare. I could probably check right now, actually. You're looking mostly just for like health potions. Whatever. Okay. Well, let me roll for health potions. Okay, finally rolled under 50 on something. Okay, so that means they do have some. Uh, what are we looking for in terms of tier? To spare, they have uh, two greater healing potions available, and three uh, regular healing potions available that they will be willing to part with. I mean, everyone. I think everyone can take one. Madcap will just take a regular. Okay. I already. I already have a greater. I have, a, I have a greater in my inventory as well. I think I'm out, so I can take one. Let's see, inventory. Yeah, I'm completely out. So you take a greater, and then um, Pigeon and Arco, what do you have? Uh... Let me check. Because if Quen has a greater, you can take a regular. And then Pigeon could probably stand to use a greater. And then Arco... Yeah, I just have a regular one, so... Yeah. I'll so take you, you take a greater and Arco take a regular, because Arco has a ton of healing anyways. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I did take Cure Wounds as well, though, so... 
I mean, either way, you still probably want to spread them out. Yeah. Okay, you there? Yeah, I'm here. Okay, just making sure. You good? Yep. Okay. Got heels. Yeah, yeah I'm, I'm uh, heels. We're doing I a potion checkup. What does uh, Arco have in terms of uh, healing? Potions? Yeah, potions specifically. Um, I should have at least. I should have at least one potion of healing. Let's see. Let go into your. Yeah, I have one. Oh okay. no, I have two. Wait, what? Where's the second? I only see. Oh no, yeah, uh, quantity yeah, I have two. two. I don't like that the quantity and thing. Yeah. That like the the column guides don't stay at the top. That's kind of weird. But yeah, I have two. Okay. So if he has two, then maybe somebody else can double up on on one just to make sure, if possible. But again, that's up to you. I'm just making suggestions. Maybe pigeon. You usually seem to be hurting for health by the end of the battle. This is why I took a new spell. Oh, you took a healing? Yeah, I took cure wounds. Uh, oh. Okay. And he, he has a normal potion. He's take, taking a greater, and he has cure wounds. Yeah. Ah, so okay. If you want, since you have nothing, if you want to, I mean, you. I know you do have your own healing, but you could also take that regular. Yeah, I can take it. And then worst case scenario, I can always just run it to whomever. Yeah. yeah. I'm thinking with how much ranged healing most people have that that's going to be good for getting people, if they're downed, potions will most likely be for the self. Yeah. It's typically how I've seen usage on stuff so far. But, you know, always got a plan. seeing it in where's the regular potion of health um it, it's, it's a, a white it's yeah it's a common and it's part of equipment not potions Dolph. which is what? yeah it's because it appears on the equipment table in the um the That's PHB ridiculous. yeah it, even though it also shows up uh under potions in the DMG so it's like yeah what the so it says gear and it says potion right after it. What the hell? Yeah, it's it's part of equipment. It's considered equipment, not um, that not a magic item. That that's annoying. Oh, fifth edition's so casual. <laughs> it is though. Yeah, but I I like it. It makes playing easy. Three five is easy. Three armor classes aren't hard. What are you talking about? <laughs> the three armor classes are hard. It's like, okay, maybe for us. We all know two is the best. Thacko is the most easy to understand system that's ever been, and it's a travesty that it is not still used. What are the two ACs? Is it just like armor and touch? Uh, what? I'm in second edition. Oh, oh, okay. You meant second to hit edition. armor class zero. Where the so there's the twenty armor classes, which is negative ten to ten. Mm. Anywho, Thaco is so fucking bad. I I hate second edition so much. It's so bad. <laughs> That's why like playing through Baldur's Gate one and two was so painful. Did they change any of that stuff with the enhanced editions? No. Oh god. It's still Thaco, and it's still atrocious. Well, now all I have to do is wait for three to be finished. Yeah. All right, so fifth edition mechanics. I think we've got our our preparation. Okay. If everybody feels prepared, we can either move on to the next 
phase, or if you have nothing else you want to do, we can skip right ahead to the ambush. I mean, like, I, it would be, like, some juicy RP, like, to have Quen, like, walk around the school and just, like, you know, bother all the students and audit classes <laughs> and stuff, but I'll do that in my head cannon. Okay. Yeah, that's definitely something you can do. We can we'll... skip, but can we take, like, a few minutes and need to use the bath? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We can do that. Um, yeah. Just keep a Mountain Dew bottle under your desk like the rest of us got. <laughs> no. <laughs> no, we're not. See... <laughs> I don't do that because I'm good at video games. <laughs> yeah, I'm running up too. I want food. Yeah, might as well. BRB.
All right, so word to the wise, mm -hmm. not all Tupperware is created equally. Yep. That is true. I <laughs> That's almost, very true. I almost lost my fucking uh, pulled pork. <laughs> did, did your thing almost melt? <clears throat> um, key term uh, in that sentence is, is almost... <laughs> um correct term is melted. Oh, damn. So, yeah. Uh I got Yikes. it out of the microwave halfway to the shelf and it dropped. Yep. Fun. Tupperware still in hand. <laughs> That's gross. <laughs> that was, that was, if you, if you were within a mile, you'd have heard my fucking agonized shriek. I think I woke the neighbors. Everybody's still gone? Uh, I'm still waiting for people to say they're back. Ah. I'm here. I'm here. Oh, I thought you said you were gonna go. No, not someone else. Right. Okie dokie. Sound like you're tipping over in your seat there. I didn't realize Glyph of Warding was a clerical spell. Yeah, it's uh, it's a mainstay of clerics. Uh, I'm going to be a couple more minutes, but if everyone else is back, you can go ahead. Okay. I don't think everybody else is back, so... Yeah, Glyph of Warding... I thought it was a wizard spell. Uh, It can be. Uh, It can be learned by Bard, Cleric, Wizard, or Artificer. Huh. Oh, Justin, did you did you add the th what the map is the old the new thing? What thing for pitch? What are you talking about? The thing in your DMs. Oh, you updated his token. Yeah. Oh, I did not. Okay. Let me open original. Save it as. Uh... Hmm. Hello. Hello. Was that the last one back? Uh, I think so. Well, Cobra came back and then had to go uh, again. And I'm updating Pigeon Man's token, so... So, um, I made a nice hot cup of uh, cinnamon tea, um, and I came back, and I was, I was, I was talking to my wife, and um, she asked me to get her the Excedrin, and I brought it back, and I brought it to her in character as Quinn. Oh, God. <laughs> Cringe. And I was like, and I was like, um, I was like, um, um, here is the, I was like, here is the Excedrin. It will help with your headache. And she says, why do you sound like Floki from Vikings? I'm like, I'm I'm like Ragnar, my friend, I am Floki the boat builder. <laughs> like, I'm, I don't know why. <laughs> Floki impersonating Jar Jar, let's be honest. Um, uh, when, when Ragnar, like, <laughs> Misa Jar Jar Binks Ragnar. Sorry, I was going to say, when you get like serious and you're talking a bit lower, you're reminding me of Londo. Yeah, see, uh, I need to... I need to watch some Babylon Five because I can't I can't do the the Delenn anymore. It's 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 either Floki or Londo. Delenn's hard. Like it, she it, be very. It is hard. Yeah. She. Yeah, her she, accent's very weird. Yeah, it's Croatian. 
just it's okay. it's a it's a little subtle. All right, hold on, Jake. I am editing the Pigeon Man's token. Save. All right. Uh, let me go ahead and delete that. Try and drag it and see if it's the same. Yay! All right. Now to edit the the avatar. Tokens, Pigeon Man 2, there we go. The first, like... Pigeon Man 2, Electric Boogaloo. <laughs> the first, like, D&D campaign I played all the way through, I was I was a uh, warlock named Ellisman. He was a great old one warlock. Nice. And uh, the voice was... The voice and the token were Floki. <laughs> yeah, I... Uh, you were talking about Babylon 5. I've, I've been binging it the past, like, two weeks. Yeah. Uh, I'm already at the end of Season 3. I just... Okay. Uh, the last episode I watched was the first episode of, like, I think their two- or three-part finale for that season. Mm. Where, uh, yeah, some shit happens. Corber, you must have finished it by now, right? I actually kind of put a pause on it. Mm. How far um, did you get? Uh, Sheridan made his return. Whoa, 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 whoa. Like J three episodes J in. J-Bob. Yeah? No, I mean, he's only on season three. No, no, I, I've watched the show before. I'm just oh. re-watching it. Oh, but okay, it's so. been a while. Okay. But I, I, I know roughly, like, all the things that happen. It's just I'm watching again to absorb the details because oh, yeah. um, I can do that better now. Uh, it, got a, it got a real Messiah vibe of his return. And kind of like, eh. I mean, Zathras keeps saying he's the one, so. <laughs> he is the one. The one. Wow. Zathras best character. Funny. Well, there's the this one. Is pretty fucking good. And this is this is barely a spoiler, but there's the one who was, the one who is, and the one who will be. <laughs> you know, oh, I've man. only watched the first season of Babylon Five, but I've kind of pieced together the entire plot from you guys talking about it. Hmm. It's it's really good. It's like classic '90s sci-fi. It's so fucking good. See, yeah, see. It, it is good, but. You know, I kind of watch these things like a season at a time, and then I take a break, and then I watch the next season, and then... Yeah, yeah. so like... so like I, I healthy binge. Yeah, you both know, and like, Cobra, you've already figured out, like, like one of the cool things, and it was much cooler in the 90s, probably, but like, even today, it's like, you you assume the Shadows are bad, the Vorlons are good. They are... They're both kind of assholes. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's kind of Just the same thing that, like... Good you know, doesn't mean you have to be nice, all right? Yeah, yeah exactly. It's one of the things I liked about um, the Look Darksiders games. Uh, in the Darksiders games, it's like, you know, you have the, the angels and the demons. They're both assholes. They're just different degrees of it. Like, the angels believe everything that... Like, all the bullshit that they spout and everything like that. And Was it in Darksiders? Yeah, Darksiders. It was the Look, same uh, thing in Good Omens. <clears throat> yeah. Look supernatural. Yeah. The angels are assholes. The demons are assholes. Yeah. They're all fucking assholes. <clears throat> yeah. All right. I assume now everybody is back. So, let us get on with it. So, uh, we are in agreement that we are skipping ahead to the ambush, or is there anything anybody else wants to do before that? I guess in the remainder of the day, I would just stop in, um, I just try on the safe house again, just see if Levingham, he must know about, you know, Sarko better than anyone, you know, if mm -hmm. you work with him a little bit, if he has any suggestions and tips for us. Let's see. He basically says, well... The less bodies he can throw at you, the better. He is conniving and very good strategist. And he is, well, as much as I am loath to admit it, a fine mage. No trick will work the same. The same trick will not work on him twice. But but, if you are looking for... aren't tricks. <clears throat> <laughs> but if you are looking for, you know, tactical advice, the less things he can bring to bear against you, the better. Oh, 
I think we have a plan for that. Good. Uh, they've set up something very similar to what you've got going on here. Ah, clever. Yes, that will do nicely. That'll cut off uh, many avenues of escape for him, but do not think that just because you have done so that you have won. You still have to, you still have to kill him. Or capture. One of the two. I honestly don't care. Just teach him a lesson. A lesson? Yes, yeah, teach him a lesson. I, 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 I listen to the wind. I was doing Deckard Kane, but... Oh, even better. <laughs> yes, it's me, Deckard Kane. Bring me your gemstones and I will combine them into larger gemstones. Stay a while and listen. <laughs> and then it's, um, um, the people of Gotham, the city is yours. <laughs> All right, so that is uh, Levingham's advice. That's it, that's everyone, and I guess that's about it. All right. Time passes. And the day. Can, I, can this be hmm. our battle? Thing? <laughs> no, unfortunately. Um, I'm going to use the boss playlist for that so um the program delusion is set that does appear as if there are you know students inside the room uh various ambient uh, conversations happening kind of on a loop um and seeming is cast on you so you all look like uh various types of students uh, and your physical appearances are also slightly different as well so feel free to place yourselves inside uh, the room as necessary. Um, during the waiting, uh, Quinn would have just used her disguise kit on herself just to, you know, slightly alter her appearance to look more like one of the students. Uh, you already have seeming cast on you. Seeming is like a mask uh, disguise self. Yeah. yeah. So you can look like however you want to. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah, seeming is like, you know, you have like cure wounds, mass cure wounds, seeming is mass disguise self. But they can't call it mass disguise self because that's kind of a oxymoron. Yeah. <laughs> oh, well, let me go and pull my... Oh, there it is. We what all know that, that about you just being a moron, do... Justin? Huh? Nothing. It won't let you move your token, Ajax? Uh, it wouldn't let me go and select it, so I, but I figured it out. Okay. Oh, I got it. All right, I'll delete that one. Let we all start. know that we just give Ajax hair, and nobody knows who the fuck he is anymore. Huh. <laughs> Pretty much. There we go. All right, uh, Quentin, where do you want to go? Um, let me think. Uh, excuse me. Mm. See, like, I want to sit, like, right here. Mm -hmm. But <laughs> it's like my practicality versus my ego. Hmm. Um, right there. Uh, where? Right here. Um, okay. Arco, what about you? Let's space this out a little bit. Mm -hmm. Okay. Sorry, I'm list I was listening to the Decker Kane rap. <laughs> okay. It was very loud. Um. All right. So we're placing. Everybody's placing themselves. Uh, you have seeming cast on you, so you look like uh, a different Dragonborn, a, a student here. I'm gonna sit right up in front. Okay. Yeah. The, for the purposes of making the illusion as convincing as possible, they have kept your physical uh, size and race uh, the same, but you all look very different. 
I have hair oh. now. Yeah, Ajax <laughs> has hair. We wait for about an hour. Thankfully, seeming lasts for eight hours, and the uh, private sanctum and program delusion uh, are very long lasting as well, so you don't have to worry about time on that. Eventually, you hear uh, some footsteps echoing through the hall. Coming through the door behind Madcap, it's Ottoman Sarpo, the demonologist. Ah, good. I have a full haul today. Very interesting. Uh, since he's getting very close to people, I am going to have him roll the investigation check against the illusion. Uh-oh. Because he's a skilled mage. Get ready, everyone. <clears throat> All right, we got Madcap between him and the door. Hold on. Just so I'm not... can't be accused of lying. <clears throat> we would never accuse you of that. I also, I also like legit getting a little anxious. Yeah. Gotta let yeah. it sit for a little bit. Yeah, I know. <laughs> oh god. I have to upload this mess. I, I'm just pretending that Pigeon is the obnoxious kid with headphones in. <laughs> okay. Hold on, I've got a... You rolled yeah. a 16, look! Yeah, there we go. <laughs> no. <laughs> That's a different die. And that's also not the right side either. <laughs> it doesn't matter, that's what I was looking at. He passes by, and he looks, and he kind of, in the corner of his eye, he sees the shimmer on uh, on some of your illusory forms. Very slight. Um, oops, not leave clear. Very slight shimmer that only a trained magical eye can discern. Uh, and he kind of looks around and starts seeing a bit more the spell book at his side uh, uh, perception did, uh, do I pick up on this oh he stops he was walking and then like as he passed madcap um, he stops right here with his things and he just looks around and sees now isn't this curious And uh, hmm? the jig is up. Uh, the witch, um, the witch would say, <clears throat> uh, "We wanted to surprise you with some of our new skills we learned. I guess we need more study." Evidently, I'm sorry. I need everybody to roll us initiative. What? He didn't believe my already. My I didn't even get to lie. try out my cool new alternative person voice. No, because he rolled a natural 20 on his investigation check, and he knows that y'all are Well, lying. I rolled a natural 20 on initiative. Wow. Oh, nice, nice, nice. Well, I got a natural 20. <laughs> so did I. Jeez, so did I go. Y'all are ready so... to fucking go, dude. Poor Ajax. Guy... <laughs> dude, Sorry, I really... Arco's mad. He really wanted to try out his new funny voice. I was like, get <laughs> fucked, Ark or Aramon. Dude, yeah, this guy's gonna get Who's rolled. missing on here? Hey, um, I am. Oh, okay. I am. Sorry, I I never I, I don't click on myself. That's my bad. Okay, hold on. I'll yeah, actually... I forgot to go and click it too. That's fine. Just go ahead and edit yourselves 20. on there. Donk. Yeah. Okay. Twenty one actually. Oh, actually, yeah, it is twenty one. Right now for the. But I'm pretty just... sure. Hmm. Yeah, I'm pretty sure I'm going at least second. Hmm. Okay, okay, okay. You look pretty good too. Rolling hot. 
All right. Uh, I'm going to skip this one. As well, as much as I like this. Yeah, there we go. All right. So, as we begin, I will read off uh, the parameters um, for this fight. The first is without mercy, which I think you know what that is already. Conjuration Adept, Fiendish Cruelty, and Magical Fire Support. Conjuration Adept, uh, the enemy prioritizes summoning magic and swarming its foes with extraplanar creatures. Normal limitations of the school of magic may not apply in this fight. Uh, or, well, for Sarko specifically. Uh, Fiendish Cruelty is one that is currently unique to him. In order to, in, it goes like this. In order to satisfy his ego and sense of superiority, it is not enough for Artemon Sarko to simply defeat his opponents. He seeks to humiliate his foes in battle, attempting to prove how powerless and weak they are before they die. And magical fire support is your benefit. Uh, you will have mage allies assisting in this fight, uh, beginning on the second turn of initiative. Uh, on these allies' initiative, the players may choose an action for them to take this turn. Uh, the options will, are unique for this encounter, but they have limited use. Uh, they call orbital bombardment. <laughs> Fuck them up. I will tell you what they are when we get around to their turn. Let me just add them in here so I can roll them later. All right. So up first is Pigeon Man, as he is dropping his uh, his bag of notes and whatnot, and is reaching for his spell book. What do you do? Um, you know, I'm gonna smack his spell book out of his hand. Okay, you're gonna go for uh, an aim thing to do that. Uh, let's do opposed skill checks of. Let's do athletics. Let's just have you do an athletics check. Because you do... Okay. Because it is a forceful thing. Um, and he'll, But he'll roll athletics as well, so he's not quite as good at that. Okay. I'll make it fair. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Let's see. Okay. You rolled a flat 11. You go and... You got this vision. <laughs> um... As you go and take aim for his spell book, and he just kind of grips onto it tighter. He goes, oh, that's not going to work. As he pulls it closer to his chest. Oh, but this will, and I'll pull out my sword and end my turn. Okay. Actually, I'll, 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 I'll move right here. Okay. He goes and slap it out of his hand, turn. and you just push it into his chest and say, here, okay. hold this. All right, Quen, it is your turn. <clears throat> yes, uh, Quinn would, um, having already stood up with a uh, you know, rather lackluster feign at distracting him, she would say, <clears throat> um, Forgive me, Araman, but it appears we're going to miss your little lecture today. And pointing at him, she casts silence. Okay. He is going to counterspell with his reaction. Okay. Like somebody space. counters for the counter spell. Unfortunately, Quen has not reached her magical secrets, as she is the only class that is capable of learning it yes. at level 10. <laughs> yes, I am, I am not there. So, as you go to create the silence spell, he goes, None of that! Snaps his fingers, and the magic <laughs> fizzles out in your hand. Um, Quen looks, looks very angry, um, and she would, looking to... Arco, who's next, uh, say an inspiring word and say, Arco, deal with him. Alrighty. Throwing, throwing, Kick his ass, sea bass. Yeah, throwing <laughs> Arco. Uh, Arco has a D8. Okay. Let's go. Um, as a bonus, I'm going to cast my uh, Fury of the Tides real quick. Okay. Push him 10 feet back. Could I go right... It's hard because like the squares are right there and right there. I want to go. It's fine. Uh, I'll assume that like you're there. If, if just to make sure that you're on the right grid, uh, we'll say you're here, but you know you're not actually standing on the bench. 
Right. More like here. I'm, I'm trying to push him to here, basically. Oh, gotcha. And I'm gonna... Yeah, sorry. That's why I cast Fury of the Tides. I'm trying to, to hit him hard. So you, know, you would probably... I was like, you're doing if, a fucking Morgan stance on the bench. <laughs> basically, if I can push him, it would kind of go... Uh, I don't know if you can... Hold on. No snapping. Sorry. It would probably go kind of like in this direction if you kind of get what I'm getting at. Yeah, yeah, I like see what that. you're doing. Okay, so I'm going to hit him twice. Okay, I'm going to roll. Bang, bang. Um, bomb, bomb. Goes the trolley. Wow. Wow. Uh, even bad. with plus two, you're not going to hit. Huh? Uh, well, okay, no, you're not flanking anyways, but yeah. Uh, yeah, none of those hit, unfortunately. Even with... Oh, can I roll a d8? Uh, on yes, you can roll them? a d8 on one of them. Ooh. Ouchie. Uh, uh-oh. Uh, I would just roll it in the roll 20 chat. Well, I'm... Do I keep this d8 until I use d- it? You keep okay. the d8 for 10 minutes. Okay, um, then I'll definitely keep it. I, I didn't know how long it lasted. Yeah, it lasts 10 minutes, which is like Okay, I'm gonna keep it for fight. now. Okay. All right, so unfortunately, Arco goes in for two swings. <laughs> the demonologist is way quicker on his feet than you expected, and he manages to dodge your uh, divine fury. Strong open, guys. Yeah, I know, right? All right, it's the demonologist's turn. He looks around. Uh, he's going to make a free arcana check to see what he can identify in this room. Pretty good. He goes, ah, clever. You've cut off most avenues of escape. Unfortunately for you, I am smarter. And he is going to cast Anti-Magic Field. It's a 10-foot radius, and I'm going to make it a nice dark color. Uh, Y'all can see it, too. So for those of you with magical items, you feel their presence um, stop uh, dead in their tracks. Um as he casts this, as the color sort of washes out a bit in this 10-foot radius sphere around him. Now, if you'll excuse me, you wanted a fight, and it's clear you didn't want a fair fight. Well, so be it. And he will risk uh, an opportunity attack from uh, the two of you. I'm going to swing on this. Okay, 21. Okay. Uh, and I'm gh- gonna really you know strong what? open. All right, Vision Man misses. Uh, Arco, you hit. However, um, the weapon is no longer magical, so when you roll, the radiant damage will not apply. That's okay. I'm still gonna push him back ten feet, though. Okay. Um. Yes. All right. So nine Time. damage, and he gets pushed ten feet, and takes three damage from hitting a wall if he does. He does, since you hit him at that angle. Uh, <clears throat> fine. It's a minor setback. Oh, wait. Weird, I'm not seeing Arco at all. On the initiative tracker? No, on the on the screen. Um, Do you v- see where I'm pinging? Vorm, I wasn't yeah. either, but I I refreshed roll 20 and there he was. I had the same yeah. problem. I don't know what it was. Okay. So, let's see. He did five to step there, got pushed. Now he's just going to go... Oh, look. Wait, uh, 5, 10, 15, 20. And with the anti-magic field, the arcane locks are suppressed, which allows him to open the door no problem. Oh, there he goes. And Madcap, you can make an opportunity attack if you like. Sure. Stomach strike. Uh, I think you can only do it on your turn, not on a reaction. Any time I want, buddy. Really? Okay. I'm pretty. I mean, I will double check, but I'm. Pretty... Yeah, please double check. I just want to make sure. Are there are people in the courtyard outside. Uh, the courtyard uh has been cleared out. Okay, good. I didn't want to like tackle a professor and then it's like, oh, call the guards. Oh, okay. Yeah, it says you can do it at any time. All right. All right. We're gonna roll that Constitution save then his con bonus it's okay and I mean, even if he fails i'm sure this burns through his legendary resists and it's uh how much is your save dc 14 yeah 
All right, he rolled exactly a 14, a 12 plus 2. You go to, like, try to strike him in the temple, and, um, he just, ugh, still takes 9 damage. Uh, I think he still has 5 more feet of movement, so he's just gonna go around the corner. All right. Uh, oh, actually, with anti-magic field, I think that's actually nine, or it's actually eight, because your fists are no longer magical. Right? Um, Because yeah, it suppresses suppose, all magical yeah, effects. Yeah, it's the weapon, so, yeah. Yeah. So, we'll just add one extra hit point. There we go. Okay. Is the anti-magic field the green area? Uh, it's black. Can you not see the black area around him? No, we can. Oh, around him. Okay, gotcha. Yeah, it follows. It follows you. The green is the private sanctum, but while he's in the ma anti magic field, it's suppressed. But then again, gotcha. any other magic effects are also suppressed in the anti magic field. Gotcha. Alrighty. Well, guess what? I don't fucking have any really. <laughs> I punch the initiative. <laughs> All right. So now it is Madcap's turn. I'm just going to stow the axe, because it's useless. Okay. I'm going to come around, swing around this way. Kind of block him off there and go for two punches. Okay. A stunning strike on the first one. That hits. Okay. Uh, with the unarmed yeah. strike. Uh, your unarmed strikes don't get any bonuses, right? They're Not just... Any, so that is 10 damage. Okay, so they, but they're, okay, I'm just trying to think of, okay, it's, they're magical for the purposes of overcoming resistances, but not any actual bonuses. Alright, so, we're gonna roll a constitution save again. Alright, uh, he failed, but he will use a legendary resistance to succeed. Flurry of blow. Okay, pop, pop. Uh, the 13 misses, but the 17 hits. Stunning strike. Alright, let me do the eight. Uh, total sixteen. Alright, that's me. Okay. Impressive. Alright, Ajax. Well, Madcap, um, uh, would say, um, I've been leaving, uh, little messages for you around. You've been getting them? Yes, I have. Most annoying. Alright, so now does the stunning strike hit him? Uh, no. You no, right. succeeded on the reaction one, succeeded on the second. No. Um, you use a legendary save, and then he succeeded. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Alright. Well, either mm -hmm. way, uh, Ajax is now a speedy boy. Uh, oh, that's and... right, because you have mobile now. Yes, I do. Uh, so I rush up behind him, mm -hmm. and we are going to... Uh, we're going to grapple. All right. Roll an athletics check. He'll use acrobatics since he's slightly better than that. This is... Oh, wow. Holy shit. <laughs> he beat you by one. He has a plus one to his acrobatics. He oh, rolled a fourteen. Fuck. He rolled a fourteen. Damn. All right. I'm rolling um, hot. Well, we're gonna we're gonna cycle, rinse, repeat, and try to go after him again. Okay. Where did it go? Oh, it helps if I'm on my character sheet. There we go. Athletics. Nine. <laughs> Six. Guys, uh, I'm gonna use my bonus action to punch him in the ribs. All right, to offhand strike. Or, yeah, offhand, or not in the ribs, in the kidney. Yeah. Either way. Uh, do, 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 do. Is he grappled? He yes, he grappled. is grappled. All right. Uh, so, so that is a twenty to hit. A twenty, and that hits how much damage does that do minus one uh so that is a what the fuck why didn't it roll my damage 
Uh, it might be your Beyond 20 updated and it was not yeah, such a hard roll. Money. If you click on the, the pink area, it'll yeah. yeah. roll. Oh. Uh, so right. that is a Twelve. 7. Oh, yeah, because oh, yeah, it, wouldn't, it wouldn't... Yes, but I do have my strength modifier, too, so it's 7 plus 5. Yeah, 7 plus so 5, it so is 12. 12. Yeah. Ooh, that hurt. Chewing Good. away at him. Okay. All right, back up at the top, Pigeon Man. Hmm. I mean, I can move through people, so... Mm -hmm. All right, let's try this again. Okay. Yeah, baby. Okay, okay. I like that! That's pretty good! Uh, remove one from my piercing damage. So, seven, and then five, and then twenty-seven. Okay. So, thirty-one damage? Yeah, that's a lot. It's thirty-nine. Thirty-nine. Oh, oh you, you definitely got a spleen with that. Yes. He <laughs> sort of grits his teeth. What's wrong, Sarko? Are you learning the true meaning of fear? Oh, we haven't even begun to discuss such things. Alright. And I'll stab him with my dad. Okay. That'll miss. Oh. Oh wait, no, uh the yeah, plus two with your um flanking. Oh, yeah. So the offhand is one. Because you don't have dual wielder yet. Uh, just <laughs> one, da one damage is one damage. He just goes. Eh, eh. <laughs> hey, that makes my thirty-nine damage into forty damage. <laughs> there we go. All right, witch. Wow, that went around fast. Yeah. Uh, okay, I have a, I have a, I have a, I have a, I have a question. Okay. Uh, Anti magic field. Can you not cast spells at him? You cannot. No spell can be cast within or target anything within it. Uh, and any other magical effects are also suppressed or negated. Mm. Uh, now, he's been hit a number of times. Uh, I believe he needs con rolls. Oh. You, yeah. Uh, I hit him, and then uh, Pigeon that's hit true. him. That's right, true. I'm going to do... I thought you did those. I, I heard you rolling for con. He's doing those for stunning strike. Oh. Yeah. Um... Well, let's do... I mean, all of these are going to be tens anyways, so... Except for Pigeon Man's crit. Yeah, except for Pigeon Man's crit. Oh, is like yeah. I, 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 I heard you I heard... say, roll, roll con, I use legendary resist to succeed it. I thought you were rolling concentration checks. No, because um, oh, the concentration okay. checks are technically, at, like, skill checks. Sure. Which legendary resistance can't use. Oh. Legendary resistance is only on uh, saving throws. I thought it was a saving throw. Uh, it, it is, but... Uh, it uses or... a saving throw, but legendary resistances cannot be used for concentration checks. Uh, yeah. Because concentration is a skill check, though it uses the save modifier. Mm -hmm. Wow. Probably. It's, like... Yeah, it's, it's one of those dumb things. Okay, so... I know all the dumb rules. <laughs> no, that's... First, first one is exactly a 10. That's a success. That's another success. That's uh, another success, barely. Now I think we're on... That was four, so now we're on Pigeon Man's crit, right? Yeah. Which is 19, you said? Yeah, because it was 39 damage, so half that's 19 and a half rounded down. Uh. Ha! Natural two! Get that means the anti-magic fate. <laughs> that means the anti-magic field is down now. Yeah, but he's out of the area, so now he can cast spells, too. That is true. Oh, not for long. Yeah, yeah, I mean, he's by, you can silence him. Uh, I mean, well, you can counter spell against, I don't know. I'm just gonna... 10. I would like to use my reaction to his counter spell to fucking smash his face into the ground. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, so Witch would use all her movement. Um, hold on a minute. Uh, hold on a minute. Can I get out the arcane lock here? Um, if you use your the password that you guys had set yeah, before, yeah. which I totally forgot to uh, Monkey slut, what was it? 
No, that that's the emergency letter. Oh. oh. That's the all clear. Okay. <laughs> um, so then what's what's the help? I need to get out. The plan's not working. It's um New England clam chowder. New England clam chowder. What's mm. a New England? Mm. Is that the okay, red or fine. the white? <laughs> Come on. All right. Come on, guys. <laughs> All right. Well, it's not old. Oh, other and other references from 1997. Please, please continue. <laughs> um, I got you. Thank you, Vorm. <laughs> you are old. I though. got you. You are also old. <laughs> I barely fucking remember it, but I do remember the statement. I mean, it, I'm just like in the rules. It says, like, um, you must succeed. Require you to succeed on a DC at Constitution saving throw to maintain concentration. Yeah, I just feel like it's something that can easily be used to waste uh, legendary resistances anyways, so... I, I, I just rule that most of my bosses don't use it for that sort of thing. I mean, unless it's like really late to do. Yeah, that's fine. He succeeded on all the, the pitiful ones and then obviously failed the, the crit one. That's a so. tough one, the crit one. Yeah, that's a tough oh, one. Yeah. That was tough, because he doesn't have a con proficiency, so it's just his base stat. Um, I know this is metagaming. Is silence the strategy here? Is that is that critical? I mean, you guys um, have strategized beforehand, so you guys are free to talk out of character. Yeah, I mean, yeah, honestly, he's grappled, so he can't move. Okay. So okay. if he can't move out of the silence, he can't cast. Okay. And actually, uh, actually, you could you could have cast that while you were still inside the room. He wouldn't necessarily know that you're casting it either. He's so it has to be at a point that you can see. Well, that's true. So yeah, if, yes. you're, if you're like well, here, you could at my feet. Well, let's say, if you're he, well, I mean, that's hard to say if you if you know where to cast it without seeing. But if you were to cast like be here and cast it like here, <clears throat> I don't know. That's mm. a bit mm. Interesting. Uh, well, yeah, I'm gonna. Um, yeah. So uh, Quen would you know, on her turn, you know, leap over the back of the bench here. Um, speak the word of power, kicking the door open with her with her boot, you know, laced up to the knee. Uh, do a barrel roll out of the room, booking it, you know, just like across these across these chairs here. Um, and just just as she's out of breath, you know, she sort of skids to a halt, holds out her finger, pointing it at his horns, speaks the word of power, and casts silence. And counter spells. Since it is now his, since he has his reaction back from last time. But we I are. Counterspell is counterspell with, with. Nobody else knows counterspell. Floor. We are burning I through. I counterspell his... it with face meets floor. We are. Him. We are trading spell slots though, at least. Isn't he grappled though? Doesn't counterspell have like um, somatic, somatic components? Grappled isn't that strong. Grappled doesn't say anything about. Uh... Grappled makes your speed zero. That's it. Yeah, that's all. It uh, does. Even, uh, even restrained doesn't prevent spell casting in any way. Really? Yeah. I feel like that's kind of dumb. Yeah, restrained just prevent. I feel like, I don't know. They should, if they're restrained, they should at least have to make some kind of small check to do like, it. I but there's no the, rules for it. Well, I think you might have disadvantage on, um, like spell attacks. Yeah, but yeah. Not spell just attacks. Really spells in general. Spell effects. Okay, so could I have held my action, silence for when he reacts to something? Um, you could have. Uh, but, like one more person already passed yeah okay it's round no 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 it's not going to be that easy don't you realize hey quit talking it's not your turn <laughs> <laughs> um and is this just a wall that is a wall so you have a door here and a door um, over here what is the wall made out of the wall is made of stone damn it yeah how Did thick you... is the stone <laughs> Thicker than you could uh, Kool Aid Man. I was gonna say Kool Aid. Damn it! Damn. <laughs> well, uh, you 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 threw you. Ah, uh, you saw through my. I mean, disguise. you could beat Sarko's corpse into the fucking wall, or soon to be corpse into the wall until it breaks. No, I. What? Uh, no, I'm gonna move out here. Could I stand here? Yeah, you can move through Ajax and do that. Perfect. No, I'm going to beat him into the wall with my attacks. Okay. Um, I'm going to stand here. Actually, wait. I have an idea. 
And this could either be a really good idea or a really bad idea. But I'm gonna cast Compelled Duel. Okay. And I'm gonna make him wanna find me. Okay, can you click Compelled Duel and put it in the chat for me? Yes, I sure diddly darn can. Bam. But I'm not gonna stand here Wait. if I'm doing that. <laughs> the wisdom save. Oh no! Hold on. Let me look at, uh, let me just look it up. Compelled Duel. I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna run away from this guy. Okay, no, I'm gonna hit him first. Hold on. Compelled duel first. You attempt to compel a creature into a duel. One creature you can see within must make a wisdom saving throw. Creature is drawn to you, compelled by your divine demand. You cannot willingly move more than 30 feet away from you. It's disadvantage on attacking anyone other than you. Okay. Yeah. Let's roll that wisdom save. Got a 20. What's, uh, your DC's 14? 14. Uh, 17. So he succeeds. Dang it. Well, what a waste Please, of time. Please, not a fool. Come on, I'm gonna hit him twice. Okay, boss. Shit, it's not your turn. Okay. And I'm gonna hit him with the first one, and I'm gonna roll my d8 for the second one. Okay, the second one uh, does not hit. I'm rolling a. I'm gonna. Can I add my inspiration to it? My one d8. You're good. When? And that'll make it. How hit. about two? That'll work. Yeah! Okay, I hit him twice. Okay. Divine smite that bitch! And he's gonna get pushed into the wall, and I'm gonna- and I am gonna divine smite him on the second attack. So... Okay. And I'll do- I'll do second level, why not? Okay. So um, that's 3d8? If he- okay, so here- I have a question mechanically. If he says he gets pushed into a wall, but doesn't actually leave that space, would that so, break the so... grapple, or...? Oh, is he gra Oh, he's grappled. Um, but he isn't it, moving the space. How how is he grappled though? Is he like grappled like? Is I don't he just like holding his arms. Place? Well, I mean, and he's gonna get pushed into that wall, and there's like nowhere for him to go. Yeah. So I'm assuming, by hitting him, I'm just going to keep smacking him into a wall, where he you will take three damage. To to you also have to remember, those squares are five foot by five foot. Yeah, There's I'm just worried no that if he leaves, exactly where in that five feet he is standing. That's true. So I would say, yeah, he still gets the fury of the tides thing on it, but does does that break the grapple? Because he's technically well, he isn't moving out of the space, so I don't think it does. What do you think, Cobra? I'm looking for specifically like Got another thirteen on the damage damn i mean he's a fiend does he roll uh 68 oh my god he's a fiend no he's oh, not he's a, he's a tiefling he's considered a humanoid what a loser he's the he's the he's the lacroix of fiends i mean for for balance i would i mean i say maybe like ajax's grapple prevents him from slamming okay because i mean i because technically like force movement breaks a grapple but he's mm -hmm. not actually moving anywhere Technically, yeah. all right, that makes sense. Are ruining my fun. I, I'm just trying to be fair and for for balance, but um, actually, oh wait, I I hold on, let me look at something if that's okay. I was thinking about this the other day, and I always remember to mention. I mean, there's never really a time, but I always forget to remember that aura protection. Oh, sorry, not aura protection. Aura of liberation. Uh, liberation. Um, you and any creature of your toy ten feet. Can't be grappled or restrained. Ha! Oh wait, never mind. It doesn't have anything to do with enemy. It's only creatures that are friendly. Yeah. Never mind. Never mind. Okay. All right. Is that your turn, Arco? I think so. That's all your. Yeah, in, I'm your gonna shit. hit him. Hit him twice, and I'm gonna say. You already did. Oh, perfect. I'll hit him and uh, say, "I told you it wasn't your turn to talk. He now mm -hmm. it's your turn. Now it is. And then that'll be your turn." Or my turn. You will begin to trace a rude in the air and goes, Come along, chaps. Uh-oh. We've got a real fight on our hands, and he will dimension door out of your grip. Uh, I'm going to put him on the GM layer, because y'all don't know exactly where he's going. Uh, but Quen's keen arcane eye, knowing that she just picked this spell, will know that uh, he is not far. Uh, and for the purposes of transparency, he is still on the map. 
Hey, um, so are we still like an in initiative right now, or are we kind of? Uh, yes, area? we are. St we're still going. We're still going to be in initiative because he's going to be okay. doing stuff while uh, that is happening. Okay. And then I will tell you when you get close to something. Um. All right. So. Uh, he still has one. He still has a bonus action. He's going to do something on, and then. I am going to get a few things in order, but think about what you guys want to do. Okay. Uh, let me take that grapple icon off of him. All right, so uh, that will end his turn. And it is now Madcap's turn. Yeah. So much for fun. Hmm. Ah. I mean, Madcap's just gonna stand there and be like, so what the fuck now? Uh, Quinn would call... Uh, I mean, uh, can I talk or no? I'll say for, like, talking and strategizing, you guys can talk a little out of turn, but in terms of your actions, we're going to go by initiative. Yeah, I'll just say a very quick, I would say, um, um, he's not far, search! Okay. Does Madcap not do anything, or? I mean, I'll look, I don't, I don't know where to look. I, just, I would okay. just, I mean, I, I would mean... just, like, run, like, we just start searching the place I don't know. So like, I got 80 like, feet. I mean, he could go up to 500 feet, but... Yeah, but the for the purposes not... of fairness, he's he's still on the map. You also have to be able to see it, though, I think, with Dimension Door. Oh, wait a minute. We should check the... No, you don't have to. There are windows here. You don't have to see with Dimension Door. You can just proof anywhere. Oh, really? Oh, yeah, that's also true. Yeah, yeah you can be, like, at this angle yeah, this it's far only, away. Um, the only teleportation spell that requires a vision is uh, Misty Step. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a short range. Uh, how about uh, the Magus's office? Uh, that would be on the second floor, which is not active right now. Oh, okay. Yeah. Hmm. Um, okay. You're being yeah, very generous with information. Well, I, you know, hmm. it's also the fact that I don't also want to have to go searching through my library to put that on there and line it up, and it's just, you know, hmm. it's just going to make things too complicated. Sure. Yeah. Yeah, Cap's going to run there and. Okay. Did you use a step of the wind to do that, or just dash? No, that's just okay. running dash. Okay, make a perception check. Okay. You can hear um, uh, a deep voice uh, performing incantations in that direction. In what direction? Oh, I'm on the GM layer. Lol. <laughs> what? What happened? <laughs> Um, I would, over the earring, uh, say he's outside to the south. Okay. Alright. Now it has come to the magical fire support turn, and I get to tell you what they do. Ooh. Uh, let me make sure I'm copying this, and I'm going to put it in... Oh, see? <laughs> Hold on, <laughs> Justin. What? Protect your school! I've always wanted to use that spell. <laughs> These are your three options. Be gone, fiend. You can target one fiend on the battlefield, and if it is a CR5 or lower, it is instantly banished. If the C fiend is CR6 or higher, it makes a DC 16 uh, charisma saving throw, ignoring their magic resistance against the effect. Greater ward, all players gain 20 temporary hit points, and for one minute, regain five temporary hit points at the start of their turn, but not exceeding their maximum of 20. And then third, Arcane Bombardment. You choose up to five enemies uh, and magically force them to make a DC 16 dexterity saving throw, taking 4d6 uh, force damage on a failure or half as much on a success. This one you can use three times per encounter. The others are all once. Interesting. So I would uh, probably say take Greater Ward. Yeah. Okay. For now, at least. All right. 
So do you guys choose to invoke the greater ward? Yeah, there's no fiends or enemies we can see at this moment, so yeah. Yeah. Madcap, while you're outside, you can also see a lot of the other mages that were kind of on standby are starting to scramble, especially as you run through here and everything. And I imagine you would probably shout out, We could use some help! He's on the run! Or something like that. Yeah. Alright. So if y'all want to go onto your sheets, you can add yourself 20 temporary hit points. Yay! And then when it starts on your turn, if you're missing any, you can add 5. Interesting. But, oh, but you cannot exceed 20. Okay. So now it is Ajax's turn. Oh! Well, fuck me. Um. And we we believe he's this way. Yeah, Madcap uh, said um, he's out in the courtyard, to the south. Uh, okay, I'm I'm gonna make my way that way then. Um... Making my way. <laughs> <laughs> Make him up. Hey, hey. You know that he's humming that while he's going and doing this shit. <laughs> Fuck, I need that. I need that. There we go. <laughs> uh, and as I am going, um, I'm going to activate <laughs> my tattoos. All right. What are you from, Mercanon? Okay. <laughs> no, his uh, his Eldritch Claw tattoo. Oh, I mean, wait, what was it? Yeah, right water. Right water. water. That's right. Um, Ajax, I think your tattoo's a bonus action to activate, yes? Yes. Alright. Uh, you still have an action to dash if you want. Oh, the shit, that's right. Uh, I can do that still. And you can go um, 80 feet now, because you're a speed yay! boy. Nice. I'm a fast fucker. Uh, alright, so... Well, then where the fuck would that get me then? Uh, so you started right here there. next to Arco. Or. Yeah. yeah, you're right. Yep, doesn't matter. Alright, I am going there then. Okay. Alrighty. I'm a fast back, fucker. Back up at the top, Pigeon Man. Pigeon. Uh, Dungeon Master, Justin, mm -hmm. JBob66. Uh, C. I demand that you give me wall hacks. Oh, are you gonna do the the locate creature? Yep. The eyes on the cowl are going to turn red, and I'm going to say you can't run from me. Ooh. You can't hide from me. All right. I am going to take him off the GM layer, and then I am going to point you directly towards him. Oh shit. You fall on the line. Mm -hmm. Yep, right there. 165 right. feet away from you. And I will bonus action dash all the way over here. Okay. And I'll, say yeah, him, I'll tell go. everybody that I'm going the exact location where he is. Okay. Oh me! Alright. Uh, Quen. Oh yeah. Uh, Quen's gonna. It's time to bop. This music is fucking sick. Yeah, it's a banger. Uh, I'm gonna use my movement to rush out kind of towards Ajax. That'll be 40 feet. Uh, 35 is your max, I think. Right? 35, I meant to say? Yeah. Sorry. Unless That's he's like... dashing. Yeah. But if you're gonna dash, why go 40? Why not go 70? Yeah. Uh, well, that's true. Um. And uh, yeah, she would call after Pigeon. Um, Do you see him? You can respond, Pigeon Man. No. Okay. Uh, and hey. she... <laughs> well, he said Pigeon said he. Oh, he said over the earring. He told us where he is. Yeah, he said I got a. He's like I got a lock on him. Follow me. Yeah. All right. Yeah, and I would. Uh, eh, yeah. Why not? Let's. Uh, I'll dash up to stand kind of over here next to Metcap. Okay. And that'll be it. Speed. 
I am speed. Arco. Um, speaking <laughs> not speaking of speed. Yeah, really. <laughs> Who is the fastest? Pigeon Man. Pigeon Man. Because his uh, his dashes, his his second dashes on his turn are not limited by by a resource. So technically, oh God, thirty feet. I'm only going right here. I can dash. Uh, your 60. thing is also set to no snapping. Can you please click off of that? Oh, I'm so sorry. That's okay. Just that way you're in line right. with everybody else, and you don't have to do there a whole lot of other things. Okay, I just want to get as close to Pigeon as I can. Okay. Um, I'm going to cast a... Uh, uh, uh... I'm going to I'm gonna cast Expeditious Retreat on him. On Pigeon Man? Yep. Okay. So basically, uh, you get to see your dash action only, as a bonus. It is only self. Well, I'm glad I can read. Also, Wait. Expeditious Retreat is... is doesn't work with him because he can already do that um mm -hmm. yeah wait, how long does how, wait how long does feinstein take oh it takes 10 minutes it takes yeah. 10 minutes to catch. okay i don't think i can wait 10 minutes to chase after this guy and honestly excuse since you're the slowest expedition retreat is best for you mm -hmm. okay that's smart yeah because then when you cast it you can then dash immediately and then mm -hmm. do it on subsequent turns well i can cast it now as a bonus action just have it for next turn i think Right. Well, so you've you've moved, dashed, and then your bonus action to cast it. But as per the spell, when you cast the spell, when you I can cast, then, it. yeah, 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 I'll cast it on myself. Then also make the dash action. Actually, so. oh fuck. Uh, yeah, fine. I'll cast it on myself. Whatever. Okay. You can put yourself no right there me. between the two of them. Bonk. And that'll be my turn. Okay. You put yourself there since you cast it. Not red. Another right, thirty feet. Thingy on you, isn't, isn't that like a foot one? Yeah, there we go. <laughs> Speed. Yeah. I don't know. yeah. <laughs> All right, the demonologist's turn. Since none of you are nearby, the incantations continue, and what awaits you on the other side, no one knows. All right, it is now Madcap's turn again. So there's my 40. Rounding the corner. Uh, actually, hold on. One second. Rounding the corner, you see uh, coming out of portals uh, are uh, two hellhounds, which you remember because you saw them in, the, uh, in his tower, and the cacklers. Uh, and he is finishing his incantation to bring another larger fiend uh, in front of you, in the back. A large centaur-like creature with a long serrated tail and lar uh, big uh, sharp claws. Okay. Is that, that is, I could, like, that is attackable? That is attackable. You could see it. It is on the field now. Okay. Bonus action, Kensai shot. All right. I'll right. take two sharpshooter axe throws at. All righty. Okay, the seventeen will hit. Ooh, four, nice. As you line up the axe, you throw it, and it just hurrah, ducks, and then you pull it back then swing again, but you go a bit lower, knowing that it won't be able to dodge it as easily, and it hits it right in the horse torso. Doing a very, very solid hit to it. Uh, let's see. Oops, that's not what I wanted to do. Uh, go ahead and make me a perception check. Okay. As Sarko is finishing, you can see that his face is now obscured. A, uh, strange, uh, like veil almost of black energy that in the wind um well there is no wind but in like this false wind it it seems to part into seven different uh like strips almost or tags or something like that hmm. i would telepathically fill the group in on what's going on You are told that there are uh, 
He's finished some summonings, and he's got something going on on himself. All right, nice job, Madcap. Magical fire support turn. Do we want them to banish or these things? Because it's hard to only one. Oh, it targets one. Mm -hmm. so you can either get something off the field guaranteed or a potential uh, one removed. I take the big boy off the table. He's going to be way more than CR5, I'm sure. Uh, oh, yeah. there's the limit. That's right. Yeah, yeah CR5 six is... or higher. Yeah, CR5 yeah, yeah. Is guaranteed six or higher is a change. Like, these characters. Oh, wait, was, was um, it magical fire support is this turn? Sorry, I didn't need Yeah, that's lot. this turn. So these cacklers are not like they're nothing. The hellhounds could be a pain in the ass. Yeah, but the cacklers I think had some weird little function. Uh, if I remember right, that kind of fucked us over a little bit. Well then, okay. So if if we don't want to banish a fiend, right? Why don't we just take Arcane Bombardment this turn? How many does that hit? Uh, it hits up to five, and you it can do this three five. times. So, you know, we could... Because the, the hounds aren't a big deal, right? We could hit the these things and that thing. And how much damage is it? 46. 46 and half on a failed save. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> I mean, that's pro like, that's probably gonna kill the cacklers. I know they're weak as hell. I mean, we could target like, and I don't know how much damage comparably that's gonna be to. Like, is it more important to kill them off than it is to deal damage to this guy? So we could do, like, um, like, both Hellhounds and three of the Cacklers? True. We could. Yeah, actually, why don't we do that? Because then it just gets the fucking things out of the way. Both Hellhounds and uh, these three Cacklers? Sure. Okay. Yeah, let's do that. All right, let me look up at the Hellhounds first. Roll their saves. They do not actually have magic resistance, so that's cool. So DC 12, DC 16. Okay, one of them rolls an 18, uh, but the other rolls a 13. Uh, so, uh, who wants to roll me 4d6? And that'll Take apply to all these guys. There you go. 4d6. Oh. Alright, it went a few times. I'll take the middle one, then. Cacklers. Uh, that's a fail. That's a fail. That's a fail. All single digits. One, three, and four. Good job, buddies. So, you shout out in order, fi Fire on the demons! And all of the, the mages that you have available, uh, they sort of like open up the windows, perform their incantations, and fire this magical barrage at them. Uh, the hellhounds take... One of them takes 14. One of them takes 7. And cacklers, three of the cacklers just explode. The pile of black blood just all over the place. The the one that's left is like, uh oh. Not bad, not bad. Ajax. Oh, I didn't roll. Wait. Uh, per the spell, do they act after him or do they roll their initiative? There.
Oh, okay. I think I do have to roll initiatives for them. Okay. Let me do that real quick, just so I can see. But they won't be able to do anything on their turn anyways. This guy... Let me just order that. And since they weren't in the fight yet, they will act on the next round. So, HX, go. Okay. We are going to move. A lot, apparently. Mm-hmm. Two scale maps. Uh, scroll out. Thank you. Okay, I'm gonna go pet the doggy. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All I can see is just Ajax hauling ass, seeing the dog, <laughs> stopping and starting to pet it. <laughs> Ajax oh, runs, jump, jumps over, like, just full on, like, long jumps over uh, Madcap and then lands in front of the dog. It starts petting it. Um, so yeah, that's, that's, that's my goal, I guess. Uh, that's your movement in action. Do you have anything you want to do as a bonus? Uh, I'm going, I'm, I'm going to pet the dog. Okay. Uh, forcefully. Okay, give it the offhand bonk. That will well, fail. That'll miss. Very bad. You go in for it, Aww. and the the dog just ha, snaps at your uh, near your hand. You're like, ah! You bring it back. Um, I'd like to see Roll Twenty's manager. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I was petting a dog. This is unacceptable. All right. Uh, that is Ajax's turn. Uh, I guess the Cackler can go now. Heckler. Let's see. It's gonna saddle up over here. It's gonna pull out this spiked chain and whip it, uh, whip it good towards Ajax. Uh, that's an 11. Pretty sure that doesn't miss, or that doesn't hit. So, yeah. uh, he goes in whoosh, with this, like, kind of spiky Ghost Rider chain, uh, goes to whip it out towards you, and you catch back as it, you know, kicks up a, like, kind of small, uh, spot of dirt. <laughs> Alright, that's their turn. Back to the top, uh, Pigeon Man. I'm gonna not drop my movement. Just give me a sec. Okay. Okay. Well, actually, yeah, I'll uh, I'll bonus action dash to get behind this. Okay. And I'm gonna smack him. Okay. That'll hit. And yeah, that does a lot of damage. And then I'm gonna dagger the one in front of me. The Hellhound? Alright, uh, the 24 hits. Uh, let me double check stuff on the Hellhounds. Two damage. Okay, they are not resistant to non magical damage. So you stab into it. You can see now that uh, both of you are closer to it, the hellhounds appear um, bolstered. Uh, they definitely look a lot more swole than uh, the ones that you had seen before. Alright, that ends your turn, Pigeon Man. 
Oh, wait, no, you couldn't. You couldn't even do that one before because you da bonus action dashed. Yeah, I used all my movement. All right, so that two damage goes away. All right, now it is the witch's turn. <laughs> <clears throat> um, this could not have worked out better. Okay. I cast Dimension Door. I grab Arco by the wrist, and we appear uh -oh. behind Armand Sarko. Okay. Nice. Here, I'll grab you and I'll move both of you. Like that, I imagine? Oh. Yeah. Yeah, right, right behind. Ah, uh, that out. Oh my goodness gracious! Shout out to Quinn for literally doing what I could not do. Um, <laughs> I, um, I want to be where Arco's standing. I want Arco right behind him. Oh, okay. So kind of like. Umayawa, oh well, which way is he facing? Uh, uh, behind. Uh, him. he's. None. He's kind of like, you're, you would be closer behind him, whereas uh, he's kind of facing in this direction. I was thinking Arco would be right here. Sure, we'll do that then. I'll, I'll be anywhere, as long as I get to hit him. And um, um, I would I would uh, also inspire Arco by pointing at Sarko and say, Arco, show him the power of Bahamut. And that'll be quick. All righty. Nice, nice. Uh, it is now Arco's turn. Hey, Cake, you have another D8. Huh? Awesome. Well, now I have a, a current D8. I'm gonna I'm gonna just try to hit him once, just out of pure. Just okay. I'll take it. Uh, one second. No, uh, that'll hit. Okay. Uh, I just wanted to see if he could shield that, but it's um, that would be what his shield AC is, anyways. Rad. So I'll hit him with this one. And I'm going to... No, I'll let him get pushed back 10 feet. All right, so we're going to take uh, 19 damage. And you're going to push him back 10 feet. Mm -hmm. I'm going <sighs> to move up 10 feet. Okay. And I'm going to move... Oh, I'm going to move up here, actually. Okay. So I can get him into this wall. Okay. And, uh... He's playing. Him. He's playing like uh, billiards with him. <laughs> yeah. uh, you gotta get those angles, man. You gotta get those angles. <laughs> yeah, work the angles. Um. Yeah, I'm gonna hit him again. See what happens. I'll roll my D8. All right. He will uh, shield. So go ahead and roll your D8. That is Dang not it. enough. As you go to swing again, he pulls up a, a mystical shield and you clang right off of it. He goes. <laughs> And I'm going to cast Compelled Duel again. As a bonus action? Yup. Okay. Let's, let's do it. Can't, you can't roll good both times. It's a wisdom save? Wisdom save, 14. Really not not super hard. That's a total of 21. Dang. I am very sorry. All right. I'm not that smart. Maybe, maybe I shouldn't be so strong. Maybe I should put a little bit into my... Wisdom. Uh, it would be your charisma as your well, spellcasting modifier. I like. I mean, I like where my charisma is right now. It's all at sixteen. Could always be higher. <laughs> all right, now it is Sarko's turn. Now I get to roll and see if he gets a thing back. He does not. He was close, but he does not get it back. All right. Uh, First, as a bonus action, he will pluck one of those shadowy tags off of his face and flick it uh, without looking over to Quen. Uh, I need to look this up because it is a custom spell that is very similar to one that exists. I just wanted it to be themed a little differently. Uh, fuck. What was oh, this? I know what it is now. What do you think it is? My, it's, a, it's a copy of my new meteors. Uh, close, but a little more powerful. Uh, range spell attack. Okay, so we're gonna roll Sarko's spell attack. Quen, what's your AC? 
<laughs> oh dear. <laughs> you never want to hear your DM say that. <laughs> it's uh 15. <laughs> okay. Uh Quinn, how many hit points do you have? <laughs> uh 27. Oh gee, oh dear. That's a hit. Okay. All right. Uh, I don't have enough D12s, so... <laughs> Bye, guys. <laughs> Remember okay, me. I have... Actually, no, hold on. I do have enough D12s, because I have extra dice. <laughs> That's right. I'm only using my... I only brought out my... Uh... Diehard dice. Madcap. Remember that not all of my plans were bad. He, he only brought out his uh, his high rolling dice. Oh, good, good. Honestly, dude, with the amount of with the amount of dice that I roll in any <laughs> given game, it doesn't fucking matter. You don't want to like it'll all average out. Yeah, like things you don't want to hear your DM say. What's your AC? How many HP do you have left? And I didn't bring enough D12s. <laughs> all right, you take 24 necrotic damage as this tag latches itself onto your chest, and this wave of decay and uh, sickly energy wafts over you. All right. Uh, just uh, hold this. It's a tag? Yeah, it's like a little tag. He has them. They're kind of like orbiting around his face, uh, slightly obscuring it. He's got six of them now. Is oh, does, it, it, does, it, does it stay there? Uh, the tag, when it hits it, it explodes into you. Um, when do you... Uh, what triggers getting the five temp HP back? Uh, at the start of your turn. Start of my turn. Okay. Yeah. All right. Person was, was that concentration spell, or is he doing anything with that? Because it I is not con. It is not concentration. I don't know if he had if any of these were concentration because our he code did slap him. Well, uh, I will tell you a few of his traits uh, that are on his thing since he is a conjur a conjurer. Uh, focused conjuration. While the demonologist is concentrating on a concentration conjuration spell, his concentration cannot be broken as a result of taking damage. Uh, additionally. He has his catalog of true names, which is a unique thing to him. Contained within the demonologist's spell books are the true names of various fiends from across the multiverse. When he casts a conjuration spell that summons a fiend or fiends, he does not need to concentrate on that spell, and the fiends must obey his commands. If they attempt to disobey a command, they, the fiend will take 3d6 damage that cannot be reduced in any way. So, Summoner. When he feels like it. Alright. Yeah. Like I said, Conjuration Adept. Sometimes the rules don't apply. Hmm. Um. Alright, so, first that was his bonus action. I keep getting distracted. Now for his action. Hold on. Uh, that was just his bonus action? <laughs> that's just his bonus action. It's an action to cast the spell initially, which hmm. he did before. Um... He didn't get back his action ability. So. Yeah, you know what? He's going to do this. I'm going to cast Tasha's Otherworldly Guys. Actually, no, not that one. It would be Lower Plains. It's a good one for lower planes. I will do that one. Move the orange dot. Alright, so he casts... Oh wait, no, that's a bonus action. He can't do that. Never mind. He already used his bonus action. Haha, -ha, I thought that was an action spell. Uh, never mind. Then... I think you should be able to do two bonus actions. You should be able to do a bonus action as your action. I know you can't, but you should be able to. Yeah. But that makes it an action. Hmm. Generally, bonus actions are like a little quicker, right? Yeah. yeah. So you think, you know. God, I really should have looked over his spells before doing before doing all this. Uh, I can't do that one. That's a bonus action. Okay, okay, okay. Let's try this. Uh, let me pull... Let me grab one of my assets real quick. I think he's gonna do a... He's gonna do an AoE thingy. Oh, 
I wonder what that background. big fucker is. That big guy? Yeah, he looks dope. Uh, he's from Volo's Guide, I believe. Uh. I think he's from Volo's. Yeah, no, he would be from Volo's because I used him early on in uh, one of my first campaigns. Um, where the fuck are these? It's not automated circles. Fantasy interiors. Spells too. Alright, fine. Fuck it. Um, here's the spell he's gonna do. So I'm not wasting too much time. And he's going to do it. Gonna make it big. He's gonna cast a Vard's Black Tentacles, uh, attempting to get the three of you caught up. It's a 20 foot square. Uh, can somebody measure it out? Is that 20 feet or is that too big? I can't see anything. Oh. Yeah, can right, somebody I'm... measure that out? 20 feet, that's way too big. Okay. Uh. That? Okay. Uh. 20 feet should be four squares. So we, we'd want to snap, snap the corner, so. Like that? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. 20 feet is four squares, 30 is six. All right, well, he can't get madcap, so he's just going to get these two then. All right, so he will and slam his uh, his hand down into his spell book as this black energy leaps out of it, crawls along the ground, and creates this massive sphere of uh, black tentacles that attempt to hold Ajax and Pigeon Man down. Uh, let's see, they turn the area into difficult terrain when a creature enters the area for the first time or starts its turn there, you make a dexterity saving throw. So we'll get there in a second. All right, uh, now it is Madcap's turn, as that is his action, and he's not going to risk moving away from the, uh, the paladin at the moment. All right, uh, Madcap is going to start by moving here. Okay. Bonus action, Kensai Sharp. Two Sharpshooter Axe Throws against Arma. Okay. I'm going to use my Inspiration on the first attack. Okay. Um, you're able to throw them past the big guy? Um, I now avoid three, um, half and three quarters cover, and I have, uh, my range is 60 feet. Oh, damn. Is that only when you declare Sharpshooter, or, or, or does it That's all. Passive? All my ranged attacks ignore cover and have 60 foot range. Declaring Sharpshooter lowers my attack, but increases my damage. Okay. Fucking. Okay, that will not hit. Right, uh, neither, neither will that. Damn. Okay, my turn. All right. Unfortunately, your aim's a little off. It's a lot happening right now. Uh, let's see. I'm just looking at, uh, okay. The, at the end of Madcap's turn, if that's all you're going to do. I mean, I can do nothing else, so. Uh, the Demonology is going to take his first legendary action to do Benign Transposition and is going to, uh, swap places with, let's see. Yeah, that one. So you see as uh, Arco in front of you, the demonologist snaps his fingers and in a flash, uh, he is no longer there. And instead the big uh, fucking thing is in front of you. My gosh, why can't this guy just hold still? Hey man. He's slippery. Yeah. Slippery right, my that's, ass. That's his first legendary action. Mm -hmm. Quinn, it is your turn. Oh, yeah. Okay, um, I'm going to use my thingy to regain five temp hit points. Okay. Um, and then uh, I'm going to come up here uh, standing kind of, you know, behind Arco. Mm -hmm. um, and say, Arco, you, would, you, would you help with this large thing? 
And looking at uh, Aramon, I'm going to cast um, Dissonant Whispers at the third level. Okay. Let's see how this goes. Okay. 17 Wisdom. help if I was on his stat block. Okay, that is a 24. Oh, oh wow. Yeah, he's got a pretty good wisdom bonus. Um, um, can so I... Uh, 11 damage. Can I mock him a little bit? Sure, go ahead. Um, I would say, um, um, Sarko, you remember the suicide note you found pinned to your servant's chest. Don't worry. We're, we'll leave a similar one on your body. <laughs> it's the worst suicide note I've ever read. <laughs> I wrote it, but the pigeon... Impl implying that he has read others. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> yes, I wrote the first draft, but the pigeon, he punches it up. All right. Uh, that's your action and some of your movement. Oh. Uh, uh, let me think, let me think, let me think. Uh, oh, you know, yeah. Uh, I will I will stir Arco once again. The power of Bahamut courses through your veins, Arco. Show us now the might of your almighty god. Okay, Arco is inspired once more. Is it my turn? Mm, yes, it is. All However, right. at the end of Quen's turn, he'll, the oh. demonologist is going to take uh, his next legendary action uh, and is going to... Gonna teleport back and switch spots with this guy again. Uh, is going to use two actions to use the master must live. The demonologist targets one allied fiend within 60 feet and siphons away its vitality. Uh, he, The fiend takes uh, some necrotic damage and then the demonologist regains hit points equal to the amount spent. If the fiend is reduced to zero hit points because of this, the demonologist regains double. Wow. Yeah. That is really cool. Yeah. I was very proud of myself when I came up with that one. Um. <clears throat> I uh, do you remember uh, a Lord of the Pit from Magic the Gathering? No, I don't play Magic because yeah. I spend my money on other things. <laughs> Well, mm -hmm. it's a, it's not, a, not to, not to, you know, mock anybody like, Hey, if you're, if it's your hobby, it's your hobby. But you know, some people need college tuitions. Yeah. Hey, it's not Warhammer. Come on. There was a, <laughs> yeah, it was a, it was, it was like a pit fiend card and, and, and you had to constantly sacrifice creatures to keep it going or else it attacked you. All right. Uh, he will siphon it away from the hellhound here. And the Howlhound kind of, uh, like, winces in pain. And you can see uh, Starko's wounds begin to close. Ah, much better. It's always good to have servants around for such things. <laughs> All right. Uh, now it is Arko's turn. I hear you. Let's hit this demon in front of me. Two times. 25 and 20. That, them some good damages. It, excellent. And I'm going to... Uh, wow. C good job on the radiant damage. Both times. I'm going to use my... I'm going to use a second level spell on my first hit. And I'm going to hit him for uh, 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 Divine Spine. Okay. He's also gonna get pushed back ten feet, so the first hit I'll I'll move with him, obviously. Mm -hmm. Uh how and he takes three damage from that. Yeah. So do I double the amount of dice that I roll because No, you thing? add one. You I add just one. add one? Uh it's three damage, right? So it's 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 three damage every time he hits a wall. Okay. Um Yeah. And so four D eight and would I add for my devotee sensor as well? Uh that's already rolled. That's okay, what the radiant mind. damage is when you roll it. Flash roll. So 48. 48. 12. Ooh, well, that one sucked. That's gross. I'm sorry, dude. 
But this guy sucked. definitely did not like those hits. Yeah. God, that one was poo poo caca. <laughs> <laughs> You could roll your D8 on, on one of those. Uh, not on the damage. Yeah, I, I didn't think you could. Yeah, you have to be a different bard to let Wait, Oh, I thought those damage. were attack rolls. Mm -hmm. What? I, did we skip Ajax and Pigeon Man? Did we? No. Yeah, because it, no, went, because... it went from me when I rolled my axe attacks to Quen. Wait. Nice. Redo. Wait, wait, wait. Redo. Hold on. Okay, so... Yeah, I think you're right. Yeah, I Actually, it, it went from me. I'm used to Bad Cap going first. I think that's the problem. And then, yeah, and then he uses Legendary Action to switch. And then you, you went right to Quen. I think it's throwing us that Sarko's going so often with all the legendaries. That might have been what it was. Okay. Um, so how about this? Uh, since I don't think that this guy is going to get hit by anybody else, so we can keep, um, we can keep what they did for their for their turn coming up, and then we can go back around um, to them because. The, this thing will still likely be attacking Arco, which is probably what it was going to do. Uh, and then the Hellhounds have their thing. And then we can get around to the Magical Fire Support um, and we'll see what happens. Does that sound good? Sure. All right, I'm going to try and keep yeah. better track of this. I'm just all over the place right now. Okay, so uh, we'll say that resolves that there. Um, this thing gets to go. Uh, it is going to do its three attacks against uh, Arco. So it does Hoops, Claw, and Serrated Tail. All right, so my... The first, the Hooves. Pitiful. Absolutely pitiful. That's a 13. No. Claws. Uh, a bit better. Total 20? Yep. All right, you take 10 slashing damage. Ouch. And the, the serrated tail. Ooh. It's going to be 22. Yes. Uh, so that's going to be 16 slashing damage. Uh, and go ahead and give me uh, two constitution saves. DC is Ooh. 10. For your expeditious retreat. Ouch. Which might not be super useful now, but... Yeah. Well, a 14... Okay. Yeah. The 14 oh, is good, but the 7, unfortunately, the Expeditious Retreat drops from that. Oh, no. But, hey, you got um, you got some stuff. Now, uh, that was that thing's turn. The Hellhounds uh, are just going to attack. It's going to move up, I think. Oh, wait, no. It doesn't matter, because the other creature has to be five feet within the target to get their pack tactics. Um, you know, they're both just going to use their fire breath. Um, this one's going to aim up and try to hit both Ajax and Madcap with it. And then this one will aim it at Pigeon Man. So if I could have you guys make uh, deck saves. Okay. Uh, Mad Cabin, you have evasion, so you take no damage, right? Correct. Okay, you just, like, dive out of the way. Uh, Ajax fails. Jake? Mm. Uh, dex save, let's please. Let's save as a dex. Yeah. Okay, 26. but you do not have evasion yet, because you multi-class, so that's half damage. Uh, which means, uh, 10 damage to you. Uh, that's fire damage in case it matters, uh, and 21 fire damage to Ajax. Alright. That's the Hellhound's turn. Magic fire support. What do you guys want to do, if anything? Do you want to do bombardment again and hit all four? Thoughts? Anyone? Anyone comment? 
Uh, I mean, uh, I'm down for whatever. So nope, that nope. Let me look at the three options again. Be gone, fiend. Right, let me see. I don't think we can banish the big guy. I mean, you could try. It would be like... a it would be a chance. <laughs> yeah, but keep in mind he doesn't he does not get his uh, magic resistance. So, as most fiends have that. Um, and then the other option is to target. We could bombard all of them. Oh yeah, yeah, and then it, it might take out the hounds. Yeah, or, or, at least make, or soften them up at the least. Yeah, that works. All right, magical bombardment, and all four of them have to make deck saves. What is? What's the fourth one? Dex. Uh, the f it's the demonologist. So you have him, these oh. two, and these ones. Oh, yeah, just magical his bombardment can. Yeah, the, any any enemies. I thought it had to be a fiend. Okay, cool. Nope, any enemies. It's only the Begone Fiend targets fiends. Yeah. All right, so that one was Sarko's. That is a big fail. That's a natural one on the big guy. Uh, that is a seven. Okay, so only, again, only the, the bottom hellhound succeeds. Uh, so they, go ahead and uh, somebody roll me uh, your 46. I'll roll it this time. Mm hmm Yeah, that tracks with how I'm doing tonight. Damn. Okay. Well, at least most of them failed, so that's still full damage for them. Uh, and then this one is still doing okay. All right. Now we get to Ajax's turn, which means now we have to do the Ivard's Black Tentacles thing. Uh, so I'm gonna need Ajax to make a dexterity save, please. Uh, with this, uh, our Armand has to make a concentration check, right? Because he did take not damage. If, not if he's uh, using a concentration, a con conjuration spell. Oh, so, that's con oh Jesus! I thought hey, it was hey, conjure, conjurer thing. Yeah. Okay. Um. So it can only be broken if he decides to end it. So Ajax is now uh, restrained by the black tentacles, uh, and you take 3d6 bludgeoning damage. Okay, you take uh, 13 uh, bludgeoning damage, Ajax, and are now restrained by the tentacles. Uh, you can use your action to make a strength or dexterity check against the spell save DC to free yourself. Or you could attempt an attack at disadvantage. I'm gonna break. Alright. No, I'm not. Uh, roll it again, just do your strength instead of athletics. Like, uh, straight. It's the same thing. Uh, same if, thing. It, if it's your save, yes, but... Hey, there you go! Look at that. Do the right thing and get the oh. get a different result. All right. All oh, right. Yeah, I've got my proficiency included. Yep. All right. So Ajax gets grappled down, but with a flex, he is able to break apart this black energy that's binding him down, and you are now free to move. Then I am going here. All right. Uh, that hellhound is going to take an opportunity. Oh nope, never mind. No. <laughs> I kind of figured. I kind of figured it was yeah. like oh. All right. I know we're going a little long tonight, but I was very excited to get this going. All right. That is that was your action. Some of your movement. Is there anything you want to do as a bonus? Nope. Okay. Uh, cacklers are dead. I'm gonna just move, remove them now. Pigeon Man, make me a uh, dexterity save, please. Oh. All right, you the tentacle goes to grab for you, and you make your uh, matrix dodge out of the way. All right, and I will move right here so I can flank this. Thing. Okay. And then I'm gonna smash. All righty. 
Ooh, that's good. That's good. That's good. Uh, and then I'll move out of. Actually, I'll make my dagger attack first. Thirteen. Uh, the thirteen will miss. Oh, and then I will move out of it, and that'll be my turn. Okay. Uh, now the witch had Arco's uh, things went. Now we'll get back to the demonologist proper. Uh, he will drop the black tentacles since it didn't work as well as he thought it was. Uh, let's see. Okay. Oh, this is going to be really cheap, but... <laughs> um, he's going to do this. As his bonus action, instead of throwing one of his tags... Okay, and he does get his thing back. So, this is bonus action. Well, then... Teleport 60 feet over here. And then he gets his unique ability, True Name Beckoning, which uh, I will read out what yes. his ability does. Oh. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> what? Is this a joke I, I, I don't understand? No, you yes. Said, you said which, and I said yes. Oh. No, no, no. Uh, oh. Oh, okay. I see. Oh, horrible dad jokes. Let's move on. All right. Uh, true Name Beckoning. Uh, has a recharge. Uh, the demonologist calls out a summoning incantation using a fiend's true name that he knows. The fiend, the summoned fiend, must be of a challenge rating lower than the demonologist's and appears in an unoccupied space within 60 feet of him and acts as an ally of its summoner. Uh, and can't summon other fiends. It remains for one minute or until its summoner dies or until its summoner dismisses it as an action. Um, and then he will start speaking an incantation in abyssal and uh call out a i have to go to gm layer first let's see right behind bad calf a big monkey a... oh, whoops Appearing behind you. Now I get to add it to the initiative turn. What is this thing's bonus? Eh, it's okay. Come now, the party's just getting started! <laughs> uh, and then he will kind of Boop, 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 boop. Back up just a little bit more with his movement. All right, uh, that's his turn. Madcap, it's your go. There's a there's a giant ape now breathing down your neck. Yeah, Madcap looks up. That says, "Huh, no thanks." I'm going to punch it with an arm arm strike. Okay. Of course, it misses. Uh, my, yes, it, my AC uh, is now 20. I can move right through his space, no problem. Yep, because you're tiny. Arr! So uh, he will get an opportunity attack. Okay. What he got? He got his uh, fist attack. Ooh. That is a 23. Yeah, whatever. You take 9 bludgeoning damage as it arr, swipes at you with its big monkey claw. Axe attack. Alright. Ooh, that hits. Stunning strike. Alright. DC 14? Yep. Constitution? I think he has... No, he has two legendaries left, I think. Oh, god. Well, that's a natural 20 on the die. 
Before you blow. Pop, pop. Use that. Use up that key. Yeah, and they both missed. So, hooray me. I'm fucking useless. Hey, you're in his face now. That gives him uh, at least a few less things that he can do directly in front of you. All right. Madcap, it is now the big thing's turn again. Let's see. It is going to use its action to do Lightning Lance. Right, right like that. Right into the wall. I'm going to need uh, Quen and Arco uh, to make dexterity saves, please. Uh, Quen, you do get Arco's uh, Aura of Protection on this, so you get a plus three to your save. Okay. Cake? Uh, that, even with the bonus, is not going to save. Cake, you there? Hello? Um, hi guys, it's me, Cake. I think he's out. It says he's offline. He always appears offline. He's a shady boy. Mm. All right. Well, I gotta be up in like six and a half hours. He's also muted. Yeah. Do we want to put a pause in this right now? I don't like stopping in the middle of combat, but if people gotta go, people I mean, gotta go. I'm, I'm guessing this, there's a lot more to go in this fight. Yeah, there's... There's a lot happening. <laughs> so... I'm... Hello. Hello. Hey, what's up? I'm um, here. Sorry, I was in the restroom. I'm so yeah. sorry. Oh, no, you're fine, you're fine. I just was afraid that you had fallen asleep at your desk. Um, so, it's getting kind of late. So, why don't we resolve uh, the the big guy's, this guy's turn as he's doing his thing. Uh, and then we can pick up either... Uh, finish the uh, round so we can start at the top. And we'll go okay, yeah, why don't we do yeah, that? We'll we'll finish the round so we start at the top next time we play, and then... That, that way we don't have to remember whose fucking initiative it is. <laughs> yeah, that's also true. All right. Also, uh, so because this... I'll remember, I, I I go first. Yeah. So this guy, he used his lightning lance ability. So Arco, I need you to make a dex save. Oh man. Yeah. Quen already failed. Nineteen. Arco succeeds somehow. Yeah. Uh, so that means you're gonna take half uh half of this lightning damage. Uh, Quen is gonna take twenty seven lightning damage. And Arco is going to take half of that, which 13? is... Yeah, 13. 13. As it kind of pulls out this bolt of lightning and just thrusts it in front of you, and it extends in a 60-foot line, sort of uh, dissipating on the wall behind you. <laughs> can't believe uh, I, I missed the monkey coming in. Yeah, you did miss the monkey, and it's going to clop, 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 clop around uh, this way to get uh, into a better position. That'll be its turn. Uh, the Hellhounds are going to go now. They get their fire breath back. Ah, I fell off the table, so that doesn't count. No, they do not. Alright, uh, they're both going to attack Pigeon Man. Nat 1, good job. Another Nat 1, awesome, excellent. N Big claps, big claps for, uh, for these clap. guys. Yeah, easy clap. All right, easy clap. Now it's now it's the monkey's turn. Uh, what is he gonna do? Okay. The the tiny thing ran away from him, but he sees something else in front of him, so he's gonna <laughs> come up here and is going to <laughs> uh, bite and then double fist uh, Ajax. So the bite. Oh, God. Math. It's hard. 19? What? 19 to hit Ajax? Yeah. Okay. Uh, 11 piercing damage. And then the double fist. Uh, fucking 14. That's not enough. And then... What? 
Why am I... Why is it so hard? It's over 20. It's gonna hit. So, that's... Uh, 22. That's the math. Holy shit. Uh, so that one is gonna be uh, 9 bludgeoning damage to Ajax. As it goes in for a bite, it kind of slams down but misses you and then comes in around uh, and punches you in the side. Uh... All right, magical fire support time. What do y'all want to do? I don't know if I want to use our last bombardment. You can't always skip. If you don't want to do anything with it this turn, you can. We could try. We try. No reason to ever skip. That's also to, true. I'm gonna try to banish the monkey, or that, that was I think because this big guy's already taking damage, so we might as well try and banish that guy. Yeah, let's try and banish the monkey. Okay, banishing the monkey. I have news for you. I I want somebody to look up a Barl Gura as a uh, fiend. Uh. Does anybody need he uh, to spell I, that? I found it. You want to check what its challenge rating is? Yes. It's five. It is a five, yeah. It is a five, which means he go poof. <laughs> So you shout out to them to uh, get that one off the field. And uh, a few of the mages focus their uh, banishment uh, magic, uh, coalescing it into a much more powerful version, one that this fiend cannot resist. And it just goes, as it's, like, you know, roaring in Ajax's face, putting spittle all over the place, it just pops and disappears. Oh, I wanted to fight that. <laughs> Not cool, Ajax. man. That's what I thought. <laughs> All right, you have one more bombardment left, and that is it. Ajax, it is your turn. Remember to regain five temporary hit points. Imagine you're out of those uh, from the greater ward. Oh, okay. Yeah. So you gain twenty when it's cast, and then uh, you regain five at the start of your turns, but cannot exceed twenty. When did that even occur? Uh, that what was... was the yeah. That was the first round when it came... Up. Well, the technically the second round, but it wasn't going to be in effect until the second round. Well, that was nice and all. Oh, sorry. Um... Good. So... Um... I mean, if he just adds 20 hit temporary hit points now, it, like, the math works out, right? No, I'm adding 20 hit points back because my temporary oh, yeah. hit points would be gone. Oh, yeah. Okay, then now you're at five. Cool. Now it is your turn. And then we will stop at Pigeon Man. For fuck's sake. Well, I can't do shit now because it deducted the points, so fuck me. Oh. Uh, I can fiddle around with it later once you No, I got it. Okay. Good old there we go. Oh. Yay. <laughs> Yay. Uh I'm wasting my actions to go and down my potions. Uh, bonus action to, uh, it is a bonus action to uh, use potions if you like. Either way. Punch the. I'm pu downing both of them. Uh, okay. I want you to punch the hellhound in his, in his dumb head. Okay. Um, no, because the next round I'd be down. Oh, okay. Alright, so you're gonna do what? One of your graders and your regulars? Yep. Wow. Wow, look at that. We got two. I don't. So I think only the first one will count for the regular grader. And then that's fifteen. That's pretty good, though. Ooh. Why, yeah. Why is it doing it twice? Anything. That's weird. Sometimes beyond twenty gets. Funky. Funky. Alright, um... Oh. Alright, that's it. 
Nice. All right. Uh, does Ajax want to move at all? Um, no. Okay. All right. And that's where we'll put a pause in this, and we'll pick it back up next week for uh, the thrilling finale of the Demonologist boss fight. Yeah, sorry to cut it short, but I, I, I gotta get to bed. Cut it short, it's 2 in the morning. <laughs> that's also true. Like, we did get into some, like, and we're gonna have to stop at some point unless people don't have anything to do tomorrow. Holy shit. Mm. Yeah, see, I'm going hiking. I like a pretty, I mean, for me, a long hike tomorrow, so... Alright. Yeah, well. I gotta go work. <laughs> uh, initial thoughts. Uh, what do you guys think? Hopefully it's not hard. too bullshit. It's hard. I mean, I'm rolling like fucking dog ass, so I think <laughs> that's my take on this. Well, this... law of averages, man. You do you do well for a little while, and then eventually just... It, it I know, it's, to, it's just it, frustrating that, like, like, that's what I find frustrating is like no matter what I do I'm not allowed to do anything because of the dice uh, which yeah. is the way it goes it's just frustrating yeah I gotcha well, oh, I went give it, we'll, we'll give it a week to chill give it a week to chill the fuck out and then we'll we'll see how many 20s you roll <laughs> yeah I I that's from... kind of how it always be I went from full health to 10 in two rounds so yeah, man. Um, my review is uh, yay a deadly combat <laughs> yeah I mean, that that's always one of the things that's you know making these is like how how much leeway do you give yourself without it being totally bullshit, especially when you're doing stuff that's custom. Oh See, yeah, I don't care yeah. about like I don't care about deadly man. Kill Madcap. I don't give a shit. Just let him do something <laughs> while he's going down. <laughs> that's fair. Um, I really like save the or the master must survive. That's that's pretty cool. The master must live. That was yeah. like when I was making him. Like I knew okay. Conjuration spells. It's going to be a conjurer, obviously, so he's going to get some of those passives. But what is a thing that I can do to keep this man alive? Well, let's give him some funky teleports uh, and a heal. And if he's going to be summoning a bunch of things, why not? And he's a cruel motherfucker. He doesn't give a shit about them. Just siphon life out of them. Fuck it. <laughs> yeah. You know, just fucking kill him, dude. Absolutely. Yeah. Since he is a tiefling, he does still have his hellish rebuke on the field. He just hasn't been having a good use for it yet. Who does that? Like Shang Tsung or something? Like drain their underlings? Your soul I mean, is mine. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Your soul is mine. <laughs> God, that movie is so good, but it's also just kind of bad. It's so amazing how, like, how, how greatly bad the first one is, and it's way better than the new movie to come out. Well, the first one's got Christopher Lambert, so it's like a it's like a <laughs> nine over ten in my book. <laughs> yeah, those were five hundred dollars sunglasses, asshole. Asshole, <laughs> that's right. <laughs> oh god, that's really good. Um, if you ever want to see a really bad movie, <laughs> which I know we all do, did you know that there was a live action movie of The Dead or Alive? game I feel like I, I knew about that but I don't think I saw it yeah let me just I know of um, the the two Street Fighter movies that are both just bad yeah it stars Eric Roberts so, so you know it's really good <laughs> I want to say Justin thanks for uh, telling all of our all of our plans to get fucked in the first round that, that was well, I just sure. like <laughs> uh, hey man he, here's the thing that um i don't control the dice unfortunately but that private sanctum did give you guys quite a number of rounds more rounds than i had initially anticipated because like he would have seen through that or like if he didn't see through that he was going to walk up there probably would have gotten the whole person off uh and probably legendary resistance it that would have been the start of the combat mm -hmm. and then when it came around his turn assuming he didn't go last you know his first thing was going to be I'm going to get out of there and start prepping. So, I mean, here's the thing. You guys definitely took this fight more on your terms. Uh, it would have, if you had, like, went to, back to his hideout or had encountered him somewhere else where he had time to prep, 
oh, there would be a lot more things on the field. He would not play fair with that. What about fighting all four benefactors at the same time? Oh, you would die. <laughs> There's no question. Like, because Sarko's got big AOEs. You know the Archer has a big AOE. And you have no idea what uh, Tarkov and uh, Drake are capable of. Um, and just here, guys, this is the first one they're fighting, so this is the easy one. Yeah, um, well, I don't know. Not I... necessarily. Not necessarily. Not necessarily. Although, um, Justin could buff them after this. Who knows? I mean, yeah, that's entirely possible. But, you know, yeah, we'll see. I don't know. The, the so, archer kind of has his own thing, and I just don't want to, like, way like beef him up way too much because then it's just like all right well now it's just a fucking shooting gallery for him so, so yeah, is, yeah. is the orange dot on the the demonologist because he's shown hurt yeah yeah he's he's wounded okay. um so and that uh that eyeball thing is for his uh thing yeah. that's up um i can tell you what that spell is i mean if you care um it's basically just like an evil version of uh, crown of stars uh, yeah uh it's called veil of shadow i actually published it so i think you should be able to look it up on homebrew uh but basically uh seven translucent tags of shadowy cloth appear hovering above and obscuring your face until the spell ends uh, it's an action to cast, lasts for an hour, self, you know, just like Crown of Stars. Uh, you can use your bonus action to send one of the tags uh, to make contact uh, with one creature within 120 feet of you. When you do so, make a ranged spell attack. On a hit, it deals 4d12 necrotic damage. Whether you hit or miss, the tag is expended. The spell, end, the spell ends early if you expend the last tag. Uh, while you have four or more remaining tags, uh, you... While in dim light or darkness, you can use your movement to teleport up to 30 feet to an unoccupied space that you can see. Uh, the destination space is, the destination space of this teleportation must be in dim light or darkness as well. Uh, and if you have three or th one to three tags remaining, you just have advantage on dex on stealth checks while in dim light or darkness. So, and it gives you like shadow stealth. And 